What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today's going to be my Amazon Associates tutorial. So I'm going to be going over Amazon affiliate marketing and specifically how to create a website like my websites beachfrontdecor.com and farmhousegoals.com where I have a bunch of different products for sale and they're mainly just Amazon products. If someone comes into farmhousegoals.com, they scroll down, they see a product they like, they click on this learn more button. It's going to send them directly to Amazon and if they purchase anything either this product or other products on Amazon then I will receive a commission so I'm gonna be showing you how to do that okay seven quick things that I want to go through before I get into the video tutorial number one is check the video description on YouTube for timestamps in case you want to jump to a specific portion of the video I kind of have all the different steps with some of the times that they start happening so you can learn about something in particular if you're looking for something specific number two there will be follow-up videos and the main thing will be an SEO tutorial for the website I'm building in this tutorial so the main way that I drive traffic to my websites is with search engine optimization so my goal was to essentially build out my website, build out my content so I can drive search engine traffic, which ultimately leads to more Amazon affiliate marketing sales. Number three, this video is going through the process of creating an Amazon affiliate marketing website. It's not exactly going to go through the back end of Amazon Associates. It's really going to be more geared towards creating a website that allows you to monetize your website with Amazon affiliate marketing products. Number four is your goal as an affiliate marketer, I just wanna make sure you know this, is to create a website that drives traffic and affiliate link clicks consistently. The best way to do that is to create content, drive search engine traffic, and to continuously keep driving traffic every single day, keep creating content every single day, because that's gonna increase your affiliate link clicks, which ultimately increases your revenue. Number five, you can also monetize your website with other affiliate programs and also Google AdSense. So some of my websites are in the home decor niche. So I work with Wayfair. I have Google AdSense on all my websites. So it's just other ways to earn an income from your websites. Number six, I'm not selling anything in this video. There's not gonna be any course or anything like that. This is all completely free. It's really just the process that I've used to consistently drive about 100 to 300 Amazon sales per day. So right now I drive usually a little bit over 200 sales every single day through Amazon and you can drive that and more by following this process and improving upon it. So I'm just really giving you the framework for how to get started with your Amazon affiliate marketing website. Number seven, last but not least, you do need to be accepted into Amazon Associates. So that means you're gonna have to have a website with some blog posts and with some content in order to be accepted. So what I would recommend doing if you're not accepted, you don't have a website that is gonna get you accepted into it, you should probably start to write some blog posts. Just do a little bit of keyword research. You can use the Google Keyword Planner, look up some of the top keywords, and just get started with some of the main pages that you wanna build on your website. As you start building out your website more and more, Amazon Associates, and even programs like Google AdSense are going to be more likely to accept you into their program so you can become a publisher and a publisher is someone who puts ads and who puts affiliate marketing products on their website. So this is an important step is making sure that you have your website built out a little bit. So if you're building your first website for the very first time, you are going to have to write some blog posts or outsource some blog posts and get them published to your blog before they are going to accept you. So with all that, we're gonna get right into the video now. You wanna get started in the Amazon Associates page. You're gonna see affiliate-program.amazon.com. You can join, it's completely free. Keep in mind though, you do need an existing website or existing social channels in order to be able to start promoting some of the products on amazon.com. So if we come down here to join, you can see it's free and easy to join. Get up and running today, just one approval. Now the one approval is, they want you to have a website with robust original content, even when advertising is removed. A good rule of thumb is at least 10 posts. So essentially you do need some content on a website. And if you scroll down here, you're gonna see websites. Content on your website must be recent, generally within the last 60 days, and you must own your website. So they're looking for websites that are trying to grow and trying to add some additional products onto their website to increase their own revenue so that they can keep growing that website. Same thing with mobile apps. Your mobile app must comply with their mobile application policy requirements. So you would wanna click through here. They have social networks here, only currently accept the following social networks. And you must have an account or group that must be established. So they want social media channels that have a bunch of followers. So if you just created a brand new website, you just created a brand new social media channel, then you might have trouble getting approved to the Amazon affiliate program. So what you might want to do is start by creating your first website and start creating some content. 
So I'm going to be going through this step-by-step -step process in this video. It's going to take some time. You can't build these websites very quickly. So it's going to be a long video, a long video tutorial. But by the end of it, you'll be able to learn how to create a website like beachfronttocore.com. And these are really good earning websites. They can help you generate a passive income. Once you start building up more and more blog posts and you add more and more products to your website, once you have some level of traffic to your website, you can go several weeks without working on it and you'll still receive a passive income of people that are going to your website, clicking on your Amazon products, purchasing on Amazon, and you'll keep getting a commission every single time you send a new sale to Amazon. So where you want to get started and what I would recommend doing is first starting by picking a niche, picking something that you know you want to promote. So what I like to do is I like to come to this Amazon page and if you open your Amazon account, you come over here to the left hand side, you scroll down. You're going to see right here full store directory so if you click on full store directory you're going to see some of these different options here all these different product categories for sale you can see clothing shoes jewelry and watches home garden and tools i generally stay in this home and garden portion i think that's the best for me personally but you really want to go with something that you're passionate about something that you enjoy let's just say we come over here to sports and outdoors if you're someone who loves to go camping maybe those are the types of products that you want to try to sell someone who likes to go cycling same exact thing keep in mind you're going to have to either write blog posts or you're going to have to outsource your content creation so you probably want to pick niches that you have some level of interest in i started with beachfronttocore.com because i just enjoy the beach and i was trying to create a beach related website and i realized that creating a beach decor website is probably the best way for me to earn some level of revenue from a beach inspired website so what i would recommend doing is starting in the Amazon directory here, scrolling down and looking at all these different options. So you'll see here pet supplies. So ultimately what you're trying to do is let's just say, for example, we have headphones here. If you create a website and you constantly talk about the newest headphones, the top 10 headphones for 2020, you could really just create a series of top 10 lists, top 20 lists for headphones, and then you'll have all your products for sale as well. So what you're trying to do is find a niche that you can write about, that you can drive people to your website from organic search traffic. So people who go to Google, they're searching your targeted keywords. And then also you can drive people to your website from your email list and from social media channels. So my favorite social media channel for these types of websites is Pinterest. And with beachfronttocore.com, it's perfect for Pinterest. So my Pinterest following right now is about 14,000 or 15,000 followers. What you want to do is make sure you're viewing this as a long-term business. It's not some get rich quick scheme. It's not like you're going to create a website and start driving sales right away. There is going to be some time where you have to create content. And what I'll say is the more content you create in the first month, the first several months, the faster your website's going to grow and the faster you can start driving revenue directly back to your Amazon affiliate marketing account. So what I would recommend doing is I would use Bluehost.com or your favorite web hosting company. I prefer Bluehost. This is where I have all of my websites hosted. And if we come in here to hosting, you can see there's a few different options, shared hosting, VPS hosting, and dedicated hosting. So personally, since these websites are so large, you end up housing a lot of different images on your website as you're importing products from Amazon.com. I recommend going with a dedicated hosting plan. It's going to cost you the most money. So if we come in here to dedicated hosting and we look at choose a plan, you're going to see standard enhanced and premium. So both of my websites are on the premium plan here. So for beachfronttocore.com and farmhousegoals.com, I am on the premium plan. What I'm going to do with this new website is I'm going to open it with the standard plan. So if we click here on the standard plan, you want to start here by creating your domain name. So once you start picking your niche, you want to create a domain name. This is a difficult process. I'm going to create some other videos about choosing a niche and selecting a domain name so that you can easily go through this entire process. But we're going to close out of this now. What I would start with is creating a new domain. And if we just click here, not ready to pick a domain, choose one later. And we scroll down over here. What you're going to see is the hosting account plan. So if you sign up for 36 months, it's going to cost you over $2,800, almost $2,900 for 36 months. The price per month will go up slightly as you pick a shorter amount of time for the contract. So generally what I'll do is I'll choose this 12 month plan. So for 12 months, it's about $1,200. So that's your per year price to host your website. And this is really your main cost with running a Amazon affiliate marketing website. So yes, it's very expensive, but compared to any other business idea or a lot of other businesses in terms of upfront costs it's really not that much to get started with your website now the other thing you can do is if we come back over here to bluehost and we look at the vps plans 
So we come up here to hosting and we look at VPS hosting. It's going to cost you much less. So if we scroll down and we look at some of the plans, so standard $18.99 a month, enhanced $29.99 a month, and then ultimate is $59.99 a month. So let's just say we go with the enhanced plan. We click, click on select and we'll go through the same process, choose a domain name later. And then we scroll down here and we look at our hosting account plan. So for the 24 month price, $29.99, it's only going to cost you $719. So that's for two years. Now I would recommend going with a shorter term here. So maybe if you go with the six month price, it's $359. Maybe if you just go with the 12 month price, well, you might as well just go with the 12 month price because it's $419. So this is where you could get started as you're building your website and as you start writing more and more blog content. And then once you start driving revenue, you can always switch to a dedicated hosting plan. So for me personally, I'm going to sign up for the dedicated hosting plan that I showed you earlier for 12 months for $1,200. So that's where I'm going to get started here. So if we come in here to bluehost.com and we go to hosting and dedicated hosting, the plan that I'm going to be using is the standard plan. So I'm going to go through this process, but Picking a niche, so what you wanna do is you go into Amazon, you look at all these different categories. You can click through some of these categories, maybe break it down a little bit further. If you're even looking at home decor, so for example, I have a beach home decor website. I have a farmhouse goals, farmhouse home decor website. So all these different ideas that you can use. You don't wanna pick a niche that's too large. For example, you don't wanna go with the entire sports and outdoors niche. That might just end up being too much. Even here, they have things like camping and hiking. You might just want to go with camping. You might just want to go with hiking or winter sports. You might just want to go with skiing or snowboarding. So it really depends on what your interests are and what type of website you're trying to create. So one of the things I like to do is open flippa.com. So if you have no idea what niche to choose, then if you open flippa.com, you go to the websites and you come over here to see all websites. And then as we scroll down, you can go to website filters. And what you can do is just come here to website types, look at content websites. So we don't want to look at any of these other options here. We just want to look at content websites. And then in the keyword field, just enter Amazon and we'll click on search. So if we come down, you can start to get some different ideas here. So exercisebikeauthority.net, hammocksforcamping.com, topvinylcutters.com. So you can find a lot of different ideas here. They're not all going to be great ideas, but dogproductsreviews.com, momsadvisor.com, a laptop website, supplement brands, sunglasses brands. So there's a lot of different options here for websites. You could purchase your own website here. I would recommend just getting started creating your own website. And what you want to do is you want to choose a niche that you're going to have an interest in, a niche that you can sell products on Amazon with, and really something where you'll have plenty of opportunity to create content around the niche that you select. So if we come over here to Amazon, we're looking at golf. You can create all sorts of golf training videos, golf tips. You can create specific pieces of content around new golf clubs. You can talk about the 10 best golf clubs again of 2020, 2021. So you could just keep these articles updated over time. So the niche you choose is really going to help guide the type of content that you create. My content's all very product based. So when it comes to beachfront decor, farmhousegoals.com, all of my blog articles are pretty much based around home inspiration and different products for sale. So I'll have a blog article about farmhouse chandeliers and I'll not only show inspirational products, but I'll link back to Amazon products. So I just try to create these really great guides of different products for sale that people can easily find as they're searching Google or if they're going through Pinterest and looking up some of these different product categories as well. So where you want to get started is choosing your niche and choosing your domain name. So if I come in here to standard, I click on select. The first thing it's going to ask me to do is create a new domain. So for my niche, I've already chosen, I've gone here to Amazon and I've figured I'm going to stay in this home and garden category and I'm just going to do wicker. So anything wicker based, wicker baskets, wicker furniture. So any, everything to do with wicker, I'm going to create a website about. So I've already picked out my domain name as well. So if we come over here, I'm going to create a new domain name. So one of my favorite tools is if you don't know where to get started with creating your own domain name is come over here and go to leandomainsearch.com and just enter a keyword. So the keyword that you plan on writing about, I'm going to write about wicker. So I entered wicker here and it's going to give me a ton of different options for wicker domains. So you can click through on all of these and see which domain names are available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and the domain name that I'm going to be using is wickerguide.com. So I'm going to enter that domain name now. 
Okay, so you would just enter the word here, .com, and I'm gonna click on next. Now, if it's not available, it will say it's not available, and it will tell you to keep searching for a new domain name. Again, I like to use leandomainsearch.com. You can see Wicker Guide right here. If I scroll down, you can see all of these different options for types of domain names that I can create with the keyword Wicker in it. So you just wanna make sure your domain name is descriptive and people will understand exactly what they're gonna find on your website. You can create domain names that aren't exactly what your website's about, but personally, I like to use things beachfrontdecor.com, farmhousegoals.com. So they're pretty descriptive. People ha will have some level of understanding of what they're gonna find when they do visit your website. So with this, I'm gonna create my account for wickerguide.com. Again, I'm gonna be using 12 months of this dedicated website hosting and it's going to be under the standard plan so my total cost to begin with is going to be twelve hundred dollars so if you scroll down here some of the things it's going to say keep spammers away protect your website data so i am going to keep spammers away so it's going to be a little bit more expensive i'm not going to do this protect my site data and i'm not going to defend against attacks so with protect your site data it's essentially backing up your website boost your rankings with bluehost seo tools i'm not going to be doing that professional email with Microsoft Office 365, not gonna be doing that. And then site lock is essential is to defend against attacks. So there's other ways to go about you doing some of these things. You can get billed for these, it's $3.99 per month to defend against attacks, $2.99 per month to protect your site data. Me personally, I'm just gonna keep it at keep spammers away for domain privacy and protection. So we're gonna get started with this and I'm gonna sign up for my account and then we're gonna continue on with the video. Okay, now my hosting account is set up. You can see my main domain name here on this hosting account is wickerguide.com. I chose a dedicated hosting plan. So I'm on a 12 month dedicated plan. It is expensive, but if I'm gonna be building this website, I wanna make sure my website has no downtime. I wanna make sure I have no issues adding products directly to my website from Amazon. Now what we need to do is install WordPress on our website. So using Bluehost, it's really easy to install WordPress. Most hosting providers have one-click installs, so you don't really need to do a manual install WordPress. So if we come down here to website, when you sign in, sometimes you might go to cPanel, you can just click on hosting and home. So if you wanna see the larger version of, C of your cPanel, you just wanna click on cPanel here. That's gonna be the back end for your hosting account. Now, if you choose a different host besides Bluehost, let's just say you go with HostGator, for example, it is gonna look a little bit different, but usually they have a lot of the same options here. So you'll always find something with an install WordPress, just because WordPress is so popular, it's a one-click install. So we're just gonna click on install WordPress, and you'll see here top scripts. So you can install any of these different options here on a website. We're obviously gonna choose WordPress here, and all we need to do is click on install, and what it's showing here is software setup, choose the version you want to install. So just make sure you're installing the most recent version of WordPress. It's likely gonna be more recent than this when you're watching this video. WordPress has updates all the time. You can always keep it updated once you have a WordPress website. Choose your installation URL. So I just want it to be at https wickerguide.com. I don't want there to be any directory here, so we're gonna get rid of this. So we just wanna install it on our main domain. And you're gonna see some site settings down here. So site name, site description. So we can update, update these right now. Right now it's showing my blog and my WordPress blog. So what I can do is something like wicker guide and we'll just do wicker furniture for now. So we'll, we can always change this later. I'll probably end up changing this after I install it, but just so we have a little bit of site setting set up. Admin account, so username and password. So what I'm gonna do right now is set up my username and my password, so we're gonna hide the password and we'll just enter this here. Okay, so that's good for right now. We have our admin account set up, so you wanna make sure you remember your username and password if you're setting it up at this step. Again, you can change all of these later after you install WordPress and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is install WordPress. So we just need to scroll to the bottom of the page. We have our account set up, we have our language set up. You could select some of these plugins here if you want. They have some advanced options. You can select a theme, but all I'm gonna do is click on install. Now it's showing congratulations, the software is installed successfully. So WordPress has been successfully installed at wickerguide.com and here's my administrative URL. This is where I'm gonna sign into the back end. So let's open up the front end of our website first. So if we look at the front end of our website, you can see it's really basic right now. We have our site name, Wicker Guide, Wicker Furniture. Here's our site description, the tagline that we set up. It's always gonna install the first post, hello world, and they'll usually have a comment, so you can see a WordPress commenter on hello world, just some sample data so you can kinda understand. And right now they have a theme installed here. We're gonna end up changing this theme. 
They also have a sample page. So what we want to do is we want to sign into the back end of our WordPress website. So that's where you really want to get started is signing into the back end of your website. There's a few other things that we're going to need to purchase in order to set up our Amazon affiliate marketing website. So the total investment, if you're looking at the first year for an Amazon affiliate marketing website, just with getting started here is going to be anywhere from a thousand to $1,500. If you go with a dedicated hosting plan, you can start with a more basic hosting plan. You might experience some downtime. So maybe what you want to do is go for a VPS hosting plan. Sometimes you can set it up for three months or six months and see if maybe that works better for you. But what we're going to do is come to the dashboard. So this automatically signed us in. If it didn't automatically sign us in, so let's just say, for example, we come up here, we log out and you're going to see it's now logged out. So when you go to your website, what you can do is, so I have wickerguide.com. You would enter your own domain name here. We're going to do wickerguide.com slash WP admin. And you can see here, it's telling me to enter my username or email address and my password. So all you need to do is enter that here. Okay. So I'll do remember me. So I stay logged in and it's really that simple. And now we have our WordPress website set up. So where I usually get started is we're just going to come right here to updates, make sure we update any of the options they have here. You always want to keep your themes and plugins up to date. There's other plugins you can install to make sure that your updates are automatically completed when they do become available. So what I want to do is install the theme that I use for my websites. So we're going to come over to here to appearance and we're going to go to themes. Now, if you look at my websites, three different websites that I have that I use for Amazon affiliate marketing are floorjackcenter.com. So this is the one that I purchased from flippa.com. So I purchased this website because it had good traffic. It has some content already. So all I need to do is add the shop. So if we open up the shop page here, you can see that I have some of these different products added. So all these different floor jacks and scissor jacks, and mind you, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. I outsource a lot of the content creation. I just add the products myself. And then if we come over here to beachfronttocore.com, you can see I have my beachfront decor website open. And then if we come over to farmhousegoals.com. So all these websites look pretty similar. Floor Jack Center has a little bit of a different homepage than the other two, just because I didn't design that homepage. And I'm still setting up this website. I would say this one doesn't really do much in terms of my earnings yet, but Beachfront Decor is my main earner and Farmhouse Goals is pretty close behind Beachfront Decor. So I set up these websites because I think it's they're really easy to set up overall. It does take a lot of time to add content and to add products, but if you just work on it every single day, take a couple hours out of your day or more and just keep working on it and growing them, it's gonna help you grow your income. So what I wanna do first is install the theme that I have on all these different websites, which is called Flatsum. So it's called the Flatsum WordPress theme. So we're gonna come over here to wickerguide.com you can see they automatically install 2020, 2019, and 2017. So what we need to do is purchase the Flatsum theme and install that one. The place where you can purchase the Flatsum theme is going to be on themeforest.net. So if we come in here, I'm signed into my account already. You can see purchase licenses. You have three license licenses for this item. So those are the, on the th three websites that I just showed you. So what we need to do now is buy a new license. A license is $59. It's a one-time fee. You don't have to pay yearly. So once you purchase this theme, you don't need to con continue to spend any additional money. You can extend support. I really don't ever use support. I would just prefer to do some Google searches if I'm having any issues with this theme. But I'll say I really recommend this theme. And I've tried a lot of different WooCommerce themes, but this is the one that has given me the best earnings. And it seems to give me the best user engagement as well. I'm going to add this to my cart now. So if you don't have an account already with themeforest.net, you can create an account. It actually makes up a lot of different brands that you can purchase templates from. You can see here code, video, audio, graphics, photos, and 3D files. So it's all part of one major website. So you can start on themeforest.net. The other thing we're going to be purchasing is the WooCommerce Amazon Affiliates WordPress plugin. It's also called WooZone. So if you come in here and you go to buy license, a regular license for this is $49. So between the WooCommerce Amazon Affiliates WordPress plugin and the Flatsum theme, we're going to be spending $59 and $49 for both of them. I'll put both of these links in the video description so you can easily find them. Again, I'm not affiliated with any of these products at all. These are just the products that I use for my website. So I'm going to add both of them to my cart and I'm going to check out. Okay, so when I'm checking out, so I'm going to be checking out from CodeCanyon.net. Let me move my page over a little bit. So you can create an account just directly at CodeCanyon.net if you don't have one already. So the total fee here is going to be $108 for this theme and for this plugin. 
Now the plugin you absolutely need, if you're looking for a free alternative in terms of a theme, what you can do is come over to WordPress, just write in themes, and you can come to add new. And after you click on add new, do a quick search for storefront. So storefront is a free theme. It's WooCommerce ready. So you can use this theme instead of the Flatsome theme completely free. And if you set up your website with storefront, you can always switch over to Flatsome later. So it's really a matter of preference. I think I get more earnings. I've used storefront and I've used Flatsome for months at a time. And I think Flatsome drives a lot more earnings, drives a lot more sales for me. I think it's just easier to use overall. I haven't used Easy Storefront or Storefront Business or some of these other options here, so you can always try some of these other themes. I just personally prefer to use Flatsum because that's what I'm comfortable with. That's the one that all of my websites are made with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check out now. So we're gonna come over here, I'm gonna pay my $108, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me two different files that I can download along with a license so I can set up my theme and I can set up my WooCommerce Amazon affiliate plugin, which is going to be what's going to allow us to import products directly from Amazon to our WordPress website. So I'm going to check out now. Okay, my payment is completed. So now it's going to say an email confirmation is coming your way. I did my checkout with PayPal. It cost me $108 for these two different files. So now what we need to do is go to my downloads page. So I'm going to click here to go to downloads. So when I go to my downloads page, you can see these are the different themes and the different plugins that I can download and if we scroll down here you can see there's a little bit of a theme here I keep purchasing the same exact theme the same exact plugin because you do need a different license for every single website I can't download this WooCommerce Amazon affiliates WordPress plugin and install it on multiple websites because you get one license for each individual website so that's just just in case you want to create multiple websites like this I would highly recommend just focusing on one one website for the time being I should really focus more on just my main two websites, but I'm looking to expand a little bit. So since I have a good routine down in terms of working with these websites, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download both of these files here. So we're just gonna click on download and you can see it's all files and documentation, installable WordPress file only, and then the license certificate and purchase code PDF or text. So I'm gonna do the installable WordPress file. Okay, so we have that downloading here. I'm gonna download the WooCommerce installable WordPress file as well, so the Amazon Affiliates WordPress plugin. Now, mind you, this individual plugin is separate from WooCommerce itself, so you're also gonna to have to install WooCommerce. So once you install WooCommerce and this, then they're gonna be able to work together. So you do need to install WooCommerce before you install WooZone or WZone. This is just essentially the plugin that allows you to import your Amazon products. So now that I have these two downloads here, what I can do is come back over to my website and install the theme and then install this WordPress plugin. We also wanna come here and download the license certificate and purchase code. And I wanna come over here and do the same thing here. So I wanna make sure I download all these different files. So the installable WordPress file, I can just completely just go right to my website. I can come to appearance, themes, upload theme, and I can just install that file right here. Okay, so I have my theme here. It's a zip format, so you can see it's theme force, flat sum, multi-purpose, responsive, WooCommerce theme, WordPress theme. So we're gonna install it now. Okay, so the theme is installed successfully, so we're gonna activate it. Now, once you activate it, it's gonna bring you to this setup wizard for flat sum. So what we wanna do is go, let's go and it's gonna ask for the purchase code. So I'm gonna enter my purchase code here. I can't show you my purchase code just because I don't think it's gonna be able to use twice and I don't want anybody to use my purchase code to try to use for their own theme. So what you wanna do is enter your purchase code and you can get that from the TXT file. So all you need to do is go to your downloads page, download this license certificate and purchase code text, and then you just take that purchase code and you enter it right here, confirm and activate. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so the next thing you could do is set up a Flatsum child theme. This is completely optional. So if you're familiar with child themes, it allows you to make changes to the source code. So you make the changes to a child theme. And then as you update your main theme, you don't lose those changes. Now, I don't make a ton of changes to my code. And usually if I do, I'll try to use a plugin. So for this, I'm just going to skip this step. If you like to use a child theme, if you're familiar with them, then create and use the child theme. There's no additional costs or anything like that. It's just a matter of preference. So I'm going to skip this step. Next is going to be some of the default plugins. So it's going to say this will install default plugins included with Flatsum. So I'm just going to click on continue. We'll install all of these plugins here. We don't have to use them, but it just gives us some different plugins that are recommended with the Flatsum theme. Okay, so now it's going to say install demo content. This is up to you. I'm going to skip this step. So it will create some default contact forms, default posts, default pages. So if you're interested in that, you can use it. What I'm going to do is just skip this step for right now.
so next is to upload our logo so i actually don't have a logo yet what i can do is create a logo for wicker guide i'm probably going to end up changing it usually the way i get a logo is through fiverr.com so i'll just come to fiverr and all you need to do is go to fiverr.com sign into your account or create an account if you don't have one already and then you're going to see one of the main things here is logo design so we'll click on got it down here get rid of my downloads at the bottom of the screen click on logo design and what you're going to see is some of the top services available it's sorted by best selling you can do recommended newest arrivals if we scroll down you can look at some of these different options here you can go with budget so if your budget's five to ten dollars then you can do that some of these starting at fifteen dollars this one starts at one hundred dollars keep coming down one hundred dollars fifteen dollars usually i'll just look for one that's fifteen dollars or less i've gotten them for five or ten dollars and every single logo you see on my websites i didn't create so beachfront decor this logo right here was created with fiverr my farmhouse goals logo this was created with fiverr so maybe not the greatest logos in the world but they work they make the website look professional so i'm just gonna have to find a logo for wickerguide.com so i'm gonna end up doing that through fiverr.com so we're gonna come back over here i'm gonna skip this step for now so the logo it's gonna show for my website is gonna be this flat some logo that's fine though that doesn't really bother me select a preset so you can select a different preset for the way you want your website to look I'm gonna select this the main preset right here you can keep scrolling over and see all these different options so if you like some of these different home pages you can select one of these presets here what I'm gonna do is skip this step for right now next is gonna be help and support so I'm not gonna have help and support so I'm just gonna do agree and continue okay so after installing our flatsome theme now i'm back to my dashboard so let's just come over here to appearance and themes so our flatsome theme should be our main theme activated you can see that here so what we can do is come over to our website we'll refresh the page and see what it looks like okay so this is our home page for right now we can change all of this you can see we have our flatsome logo up here we don't have any menu assigned this is the only post on our website is this hello world post so we do want to change some of this stuff around a little bit but for now, what we're going to do is come back over to our website. And what we want to do is go to plugins and install the WooZone WooCommerce plugin. Okay, so you can see some of the different plugins we have here. What I would recommend doing is setting up the Akismet anti-spam plugin. So it's the best way to protect your blog from spam. You're going to get spam comments as your website starts to rank higher in Google and as you start to get more traffic. So you just want to make sure you have this Akismet anti-spam plugin installed. We have contact form 7 here. Hello Dolly, which I'm going to delete. Okay, we're going to delete this plugin. Okay, so now what we want to do is add new, and we're just going to upload that file that we downloaded earlier. So we came to our downloads page, download, we did the installable WordPress file. So we're going to take that file and we're going to upload it right here. Okay, so we have our Code Canyon WooCommerce Amazon Affiliates WordPress plugin. So we're going to install it now. Okay, so it's saying plugin installed successfully. So we're going to activate the plugin. All right, at the top, it's saying for best possible user experience with WooZone, we highly recommend using one of these AA team custom themes. I'm going to dismiss this notice. You can look at these themes if you want, see if one of see if you like one of them. If you've already purchased Flatsum, I would recommend just going with Flatsum. I have used the Kingdom theme in the past. I wasn't a huge fan, so I'm just going to dismiss this notice here. The current memory limit for us is 40 megabytes. They recommend setting memory to at least 128 megabytes. I'll show you how to do that. Server does not have SOAP client class enabled, so gateway plugins which use SOAP may not work as expected. We're going to dismiss this. Okay, so now as we scroll down, they're going to offer some different plugins, and these are all plugins that they recommend us purchase because it gives them additional sales. So WZone and New Awesome WordPress plugin, additional variation images, I'm going to dismiss. You can do Amazon product comparison tables. Affi Amazon affiliate products boxes block. I'm going to dismiss all of these notices here. So now it's saying this theme recommends the following plugin we're just going to dismiss this for now as well so all we need to do is make sure we install our default pages so cart and checkout which we really don't need with our amazon affiliate marketing website the way that i set it up i don't have a cart or a checkout page so if we scroll down you can see this is what woozone is going to look like so if we come to dashboard what we need to do first is enter our item purchase code so again going back to our downloads page on codecanyon.net what you want to do is download this text file and then open it and you're going to have a purchase code in there so i'm going to enter that now so we're going to come over here i have my email and i'm going to enter my item purchase code here so once you enter that code in there then what it's going to say is welcome to the w zone setup wizard please take five minutes to set up the most important plugin settings so we're going to get started 
What kind of website is it? So you have blog, online store, personal website, or other. So I'm just going to do online store. It's going to be technically a blog and an online store. It could kind of be all three of these things, but we're going to go with next. What is the state of the website? So we're going to do fresh install. So I don't have any content yet. So we're going to click on next again. Okay. So what is the purpose you want to use Woos zone and some of the different options? I already have a website. Want to earn some money, some easy money from affiliation. So you can select one of these here. So for this, I'm just going to do, I'm creating a new website with the sole purpose of having a store featuring Amazon products. So that's the one I'm going to choose. So we're going to go with next. So some of these different options here on site cart. So I don't want an on site cart. I'd rather just send people directly to Amazon when they click on one of my links with an on site cart. It allows people to add multiple Amazon products into the cart. And then when they click checkout, they're going to go directly to Amazon. So this is again, a matter of preference. I always set it up without the on site cart 90 day cookies. I always say, to keep this checked because if a customer adds a product into Amazon cart, it's kept there for 90 days. And if the user continues shopping, you will also get the commissions. So 90 day cookie is what I select reviews tab. So show Amazon reviews. I'll do that. Show frequently bought together products. I'll do that product availability by country. So you can choose this or not choose this. It's really up again, a matter of preference. This option displays coupons. If they're available, not going to do that. Ask the user email address before the checkout process happens. I'm not going to do that. This option will display all product images from the Amazon content delivery network. And for the last two for remote Amazon images, I'm going to keep this checked. And for show free shipping, I'm not going to keep this checked. So we're going to click on next. Now prices set up. So what I always do is just only Amazon for import product from merchant. I just do only Amazon. So you can do Amazon and other sellers, but I always just choose only Amazon here. I think it just makes sure that a lot of the products that I'm importing are going to have the prices all completely set up and pretty consistent over time import as, so you can import as a publish or as a draft. So if you want to import as a draft that allows you to edit the products before you publish them, you are going to have to go and manually publish them. I just like to import as publish, and then you can always go back and edit the products later import products with price zero. I always keep this in unchecked and import attributes. I keep this checked. So we're going to go with next number of images and variations. So with number of images, I wouldn't recommend going with all because if you're trying to import a product with a ton of images, it's just going to take a lot more time. You can come down here and do something like three, five, seven, usually with number of images, I'll just do two because I think as long as I just have the main product image, I'm fine. If there's a second image to import, then I'll import that one as well. So number of images I've set at two now product variations. So if you ever been to a product page on Amazon, where let's just say, for example, Nike is selling t-shirts, they might have 10 variations of the same t-shirt in different colors, different sizes. So you can import product variations. I prefer not to use variations at all. Again, this is a matter of preference and something that if you're going to be importing products with a lot of variations, then you can do that. For mine, if for example, there's a wicker company selling four or five different types of products, I'd rather just import them all separately rather than have them all on one product page with variations. So I'm going to do variations, none spin on import. I do choose to auto spin content at import helps to avoid Google finding duplicate content. There is going to be some duplicate content issues here when you are importing products from Amazon. That's why I really focus a lot on trying to make sure that I create a lot of original blog content on my website as well. So we're going to click on next here, checkout message. You will be redirected to Amazon website to complete your checkout. So when someone clicks on a product on my website, so let's just say we come over here to beachfront decor and we'll just scroll down and let's say I click on beach wall decor. Someone comes into this page. Let's just say they're interested in this product right here. They click on learn more. It's just going to take them directly to Amazon. So what I generally do when I'm setting this up is redirect in one second buy button custom text. You can see on my website, I had it set up as learn more. So I prefer to do learn more because I think people click on learn more. They go to Amazon, then they get to learn more about the products, the pricing and everything they really need to know. Buy button opens in, I'll do new tab as of text font size. So with that, if we come over here and we click on this page, so we're going to this product page, what's going to happen when you import products from Amazon, it's going to import the descriptions, everything like that. So the Amazon price right here is $47 and 87 cents. Someone can click on learn more and go to Amazon. So the as of, so this is the last date that this product has been updated. So right now it's saying as of May 15th, 2020, the product price for this individual piece of canvas art is $47 and 87 cents. 
So when it's coming over here and saying as of text font size, that's exactly what it means is this as of text right here. So you can make this smaller, larger. I'll just keep it at the 0.6 and we're gonna click on next. Now what you need to do is set up your access key ID and your secret access key and your affiliate ID for your website. So if you haven't been accepted to the Amazon Associates program yet, at this point, what you wanna do is go to your website and start adding original content. So you can write your own original content around some of your top keywords. So for example, if we come over here to Wicker Guide and I wanna start adding some content here, what I can do is something along the lines of what is Wicker Furniture, how is Wicker Furniture made, types of Wicker Furniture. So I can come up with 10, 15 different blog posts and start writing about the main topic of my website. So if we come over to my website, farmhousegoals.com, if we come to my blog, just go to blog home, a lot of my content is really product-based. For example, I have a bunch of bedding products here, so this is one of my blog posts, farmhouse bedding sets and rustic bedding sets. Obviously, I'm targeting these two keywords here, so I want this post to rank high in Google for farmhouse bedding. So we keep scrolling down, I have TV stands, wood signs, metal farmhouse signs, if we keep coming down, so this is a little bit different, 101 farmhouse bedroom ideas. So what you wanna do is just start writing blog posts, start creating this content on your website if you're not accepted to the Amazon Affiliate Marketing, Amazon Associates program yet. So if you don't have an account that's been approved, that's where you need to start. So if you don't have this content on your website, then you need to either write it or what I would recommend doing is using a service like iWriter.com. So with iWriter.com, you can come in to order content and you can order content for as low as five, $10. So you can get 10 articles easily and the articles aren't gonna be overly long if you're only spending $10 per article. But let's just say, for example, you want 10 articles, you're willing to spend $20 per article. You can get 10 different articles all around the main topics of your website and they're gonna be anywhere from 500 to probably 700 words each and they're gonna be well-written articles for the most part. So you, you have the option to reject content if it's not good enough, you have the option to get article rewrites. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with iWriter. So if you don't wanna go and create your own content right now and write 10 articles, then just make a small investment with iWriter and get some content for your website because that's what's gonna allow you to be accepted into the Amazon Associates program. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to create your demo access, your access key ID and your secret access key along with an affiliate ID and your Amazon Associates account. So what you wanna do first is sign into your Amazon Associates account. So at this point, if you're not accepted into Amazon Associates, I would fast forward through the video a little bit because I'm gonna go through content and different ways to add some content to your website. So if you're not accepted into Amazon Associates, you're gonna need that content in order to be accepted. So once you are in, what you wanna do is go into your account and you wanna go to the tools menu at the very top and click on product advertising API. So from there, when you click on that link, it's gonna bring you to a page that looks like this and you wanna scroll down that page and you're gonna see a portion that says manage your credentials. So with your credentials, you're creating an access key ID and a secret access key ID. When you add credentials, it's gonna create both of those keys. You wanna make sure you download those key IDs because you're gonna use them to enter and connect the Amazon product API to your WordPress website. And the WooZone plugin is what's gonna allow you to connect both of those things. Now, once you have both of your access key IDs, you wanna add them back to that portion that I showed you earlier. And I'm gonna go through that in a few screenshots, but the next one I have is you also wanna to go to the top of your Amazon Associates account. You wanna click on the email address up at the top, so for your account, and then manage your tracking IDs. And from there, you can go down and add a new tracking ID. So for every store, I have a different tracking ID. So that allows me to track sales separately for each individual store. So you wanna add a tracking ID. And you can see here, I created my tracking ID. It's just Wicker0720. So they're always gonna have this dash 20 at the end. And then the Wicker07 is just whatever's available. I just want something that I know. I can tell each store apart. So now I have all of my things created. I went to the tools menu. I went to the product advertising API, got my access key, my secret access key, and I have my affiliate ID. So the last thing we need to do is come over here and enter our access key ID. Obviously I blocked a portion of it and my secret access key ID. And I blocked a portion of that as well. And then I entered my affiliate ID here. So you can create separate affiliate IDs for different countries. That's something you might wanna do down the line or you might wanna do it now if you're really focused on specific countries with your website. 
For me personally, usually I'll start with the United States and then use the United Kingdom and Canada. So once my website starts growing, I'll enter all those other affiliate IDs, but for now I just wanna use the United States. So once we enter our access key ID, our secret access key, our affiliate ID, and I showed you with the previous screenshots how to do that, what we wanna do is we're gonna come back over to our website and we're still setting up the WooZone plugin at this point and we wanna scroll all the way to the bottom and I wanna check my Amazon AWS keys. So we're gonna click here. Okay, now I got a check mark, country United States. So it's saying the WooCommerce Amazon affiliates was able to connect to Amazon with the specified AWS key pair and associate ID. So now I'm all ready to go, I have it all set up. Now one thing to keep in mind, if we come back over to the screenshots, Amazon recommends updating your access keys every single 90 days, and you're only allowed to create two access key IDs. So if you have multiple websites, so for example, this is gonna be my fourth Amazon affiliate website that I'm creating. So with four different websites, you're able to use the same access key IDs for multiple websites. So when you do update your access key IDs, what you need to do is go back to the WooZone plugin, and right at the front screen of the WooZone plugin, when you're doing your Amazon configuration, you can always up to update those keys very easily and then check your keys like I showed you down here, check your Amazon AWS keys, and as long as you get this check mark, everything is connected, then you're ready to finish and you can update your keys, or if you're just creating new keys and you just wanna follow the steps I just went through. So we're gonna click on finish now. Okay, so we got congrats, you have successfully set up WooZone Wizard. We can now import Amazon products into our website. So now I'm gonna click on close. And if you ever want to update your keys or if you're having any issues with your keys, what you want to do is click on the WZone plugin on the left hand side, go directly to your dashboard. And then what you want to do is click on Amazon config. So that's for Amazon configuration. We can click here. When you go into this page, you're going to be able to see your Amazon API keys. You can see we're using the new API 5.0 as of January 14th, 2020. So you always want to use the newest Amazon API. And now we can go through setting up the rest of the plugin. So what I'm gonna do is come in here to plugin setup and I'm gonna go through the different things that I do when I'm setting up the plugin. Now you can adjust any of these things. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. People use different configurations for WZone. I'm just showing you the configuration that I use, what works for me. So first is gonna be the on-site cart. So I don't use the on-site cart. I'd rather if someone's gonna click a product, just be redirected directly to Amazon. Cause once I get that click and someone goes to Amazon, I think they're more likely to convert. I haven't done a ton of testing with the on-site cart. I've just always set up my website this way and I've just always kept it that way as well. So I have no on-site cart. When someone clicks on learn more, they're just gonna be redirected directly to Amazon rather than adding something to the cart. And then when they click checkout, they're gonna be redirected to Amazon. So I have no for on-site cart. 90 day cookies, I do yes. Show Amazon URL as buy URL, I do yes here. Get product short URL for this one, I do no. We'll keep scrolling down. I keep the badges and flags as they're already set. So no, yes, top left. Keep scrolling down. These next three, I all set as no. And then we'll keep scrolling down. Show coupon, I do no. Checkout email, I have no, no here. I have no for export emails, no for gallery. No for remove featured image from product gallery. Yes and yes for product short description and review tab. Checkout message, if you will be redirected to Amazon website to complete your checkout and then redirect, I just do one. If we keep coming down, so product buy button. So for Amazon, what I do here is learn more. And then open in, I like to open in a new tab. So when someone clicks on the buy button for an Amazon product, it opens it in a new tab. You could do the same thing for eBay here. I don't usually import eBay products to my website, but if you wanna import eBay products, that's another option that you have. eBay has their own affiliate marketing program. I really just focus on Amazon and a couple of the other affiliate partnerships that I work with. Keep scrolling down, remote Amazon images, select yes. Select remote image sizes. I just leave this as is. Keep coming down. So product and post show additional images. I'll do yes here. Product and post extra CSS, I have nothing. Activate product availability by country box. For this, I set as no. Product availability by country box. So I have this set as no. So right now it's showing before add to cart button. That's fine. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to have it there anyway. Show country flag on cart page. So I don't actually have a cart page. So I could just select yes or no for this. Country flags as links, no. Delete attachments also when you delete a product. So for this, I do yes because I want to delete the attachments that are associated with that product when I delete the product as well. Cross-selling, I keep as yes. Cross-selling products, I set to three. 
cross-selling variable product first variation keep coming down products with missing offer listing id external i set this as no this one as no and then show availability icon as yes keep scrolling down activate product price disclaimer so i keep this as yes text font size so you can make this a little bit larger if you want for my other websites i have it set at one so we'll just set it at one here and then the way it's going to look is choose display price template so with this amazon price as of and then it's month date and year so for the date format i like to make sure i change this to month date and year and then i'm going to do save the settings so that's the first part of the settings for setting up the w zone plugin so if we come to the top here that portion is the plugin setup so that's how we're setting up the actual plugin for general and Amazon tab. The next is gonna be the import setup. So we'll go to that now. Okay, so I went over a few of these as we were setting up the plugin in the very beginning. So import attributes, yes. I'm not gonna select any attributes here. It's just all Amazon attributes list. Keep coming down, beautify attribute title, no. Prices set up only Amazon. Import product for merchant, Amazon, and other sellers. This one I'm just gonna to set to only Amazon. Import products with price zero, no variation so i'm not going to have any variations i don't like to use variations for my amazon affiliate marketing websites again this is a matter of preference you can import variations if you want to import i just like to import directly as publish and then i can go back and edit the product titles image import type i'm going to do default download images at import ratio product validation i keep this at 90 cron number of images i keep this at 100 number of images so how many images to download for each product default is all so for this usually i'll just set it at one or two so we'll just set it at two for now so i don't like to set too many images because too many images can actually end up just being too much when you're importing your products if you import a thousand products and each product has five images on average then you're going to be importing a ton of images to your website image names product title spin on import i'm going to set this as yes spin max replacements 10 replacements create only parent categories on import this one i set to no force import parent the last three i just set to yes and then we can save these settings so you want to make sure you have your settings all set up you can again always change these settings and go back and do that now the rest of these i'm just going to leave as is so the next thing you want to do is go to the direct import extension this allows you to go directly to amazon.com and import products to your website so you want to get the direct import extension so you want to come here and once you come in here for the direct import extension, what you want to do is click on this link right here, get the W zone direct import extension here. So we're going to click there. It's going to open up the Google Chrome store. So we're going to add this to Chrome. Okay. We're going to add extension. Okay. So now this has been added to Google Chrome. So what we can do now is go directly to amazon.com. And what you can see is when we go to Amazon, we have the W zone direct import extension up here at the very top. If you want to import products, please go to any Amazon product details page. So we have to actually open up an individual product. So since my website is wickerguide.com, I just search wicker furniture. So let's just open up this wicker rocking chair. We're going to open up this product page. So we come into this product page here. And what it's going to say is before using this extension, you need to authorize it in the W zone plugin on your install. So what we need to do is come back over here and we need to generate a new API key. So I'm going to generate that key now. Okay. So I have my API secret key here and now we can click on save the settings. Okay. So now it says options updated successfully. So now what we want to do is we want to come back over to Amazon and you can see before using this extension, you need to authorize the W zone plugin. So we come back over here. Okay. When you come back over here, what you're going to have to do is refresh the page. So when you refresh the page, you're going to get this up at the top. Do you want to authorize the direct import extension to access and import products? So we're going to click on authorize. So now you can see website successfully added. So we can come back over to Amazon. Now we can refresh this page. And what you can see is now it's showing this product up at the very top. So all we need to do is click on this product and it's going to import it to our website. If we come over to where to import, you can see right here, it's wicker guide. So we have our website activated through the WooZone direct import plugin. This is the plugin I use to add all the products to my website. Now they had old plugins and old ways to install products in the past to add products to your website. This is the way I currently add products to my website. So what we can do is click right here. And once we start creating our product categories, we're going to have some categories come up. The only product category we have right now is uncategorized. So I'm going to go through product categories in the next step. But what I want to do first is go over some different WordPress plugins that you want to make sure you install for your website. So when you're setting up your website, I like to kind of set up everything first before I start adding products and before I start adding blog posts and everything like that. So what we're going to do is click on close for right now. And I'm going to come back over here and show you how to import this product. 
So right now, all you can do, all, what you can do is click on import and it's gonna import the product and it's gonna actually import the categories from Amazon. I do not recommend doing that. Amazon categories are gonna be set up differently than the categories you wanna set up for your website. So essentially what it would do, if I imported this product and auto detected categories from Amazon, it's gonna create categories on my website for patio lawn and garden, patio furniture and accessories, patio seating, chairs, and rocking chairs. All of those categories are gonna be created when I import this one individual product. Now you can do that if you'd rather just import those categories yourself and then go back and edit the categories and make sure they're all set up properly. I just prefer to do it manually. So coming back over to our website, that's pretty much all you need to do to set up the WZone plugin. Now there's more things that you can set up over time and you can also use some of these different options down here so for example they have insane import mode that's another way to import products i would recommend checking that out seeing if you'd rather import products that way there's different ways to import products with the w zone direct import plugin now the other thing is synchronization and what you can do is you can actually synchronize your products on your website so if we come over to synchronization what you can do is make sure your products are always up to date and you can make sure that Amazon is constantly checking that the product is in stock, the product has a current price, and you can make sure if there's any product changes. For example, I import this product to my website. The current price right now is $159.99 and free shipping. Now let's just say a month or two goes by, the price goes up to $169.99. What synchronization is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that those products stay up to date. So that's something you wanna make sure you set up within your WZone plugin. And I can go through this later in the video, but I don't have any products yet, so I'm not gonna do that. Now, a few other things down here, content spinner, not something I really use. Amazon recommendations, again, not something I use too often. So if you wanna get more familiar with this plugin and kinda of use some of these different options that they have, there's really no downside to learning every detail of the WooZone plugin. For me, I come in here and I make sure I have my Amazon configuration set up and I make sure I have my direct import extension set up on my Google Chrome because that allows me to import products directly from Amazon. So if we keep scrolling down to the bottom here, there's some more speed optimization, assets downloads, product stats, synchronization log to make sure all your synchronization is happening every single day. Come up here. The other thing you can do is auto import products. Again, I'd rather just do it manually, but these are all different options that you have using this plugin. So make sure you take advantage of this plugin and every single detail that there is if you want to use all of that for your website. So we're going to come over here to plugins next and we're going to come to installed plugin. Okay, so you can see here, we already have two updates available for some of these different plugins that we have installed. You always wanna keep your plugins up to date. So if your plugins aren't up to date, that means that hackers can actually hack your website because a lot of times these plugins have updates because there's security vulnerabilities. Not only do they update to give you some new features, but a lot of it is also just patching up any security issues they currently have. So make sure you always keep your plugins up to date. So what we're gonna do is update these two plugins now. We'll just come here and we'll do update and apply. Okay, so both of our plugins are updated. Now, some of the plugins I recommend adding to your website before you get started is first off Yoast SEO. So I always add the Yoast SEO plugin to all of my websites. So we're gonna come into plugins here. And what I'm gonna do is just go to the popular page because I know there's some different plugins on the popular page that I generally use. Okay, so if we go to add new plugins, what, we're, what I'm gonna do is click on this popular tab here. We already have contact form seven, so it's really easy to set up contact forms using this plugin. Yoast SEO, so we're gonna install this one now. I'm gonna install Classic Editor, so I just prefer to use the Classic Editor. This, again, is really a matter of preference. If you like using the current block editor that's available in WordPress, then just continue to use the current block editor. For me, I've been using WordPress for years and years, so the Classic Editor is what I'm completely used to, so I just don't like to learn some of these new things when I'm already comfortable with something like the Classic Editor. So I'm gonna click on Install Now for this one. Keep coming down. We already have WooCommerce, so you have to make sure you have WooCommerce installed. Elementor Page Builder, very popular plugin. So this is something that you can set up here as well. So it's a drag and drop page builder, makes it really easy to create pages on your website. So some of these different options here, so duplicate posts, WordPress importer, WordFence security is something that you can set up. So we'll install this one now. Keep coming down, all-in-one migration, Google Analytics dashboard plugin. So this could be a good option. I'm gonna show you how I install Google Tag Manager. Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools, AKA Google Search Console. So you wanna make sure you have those three things installed on your website. So we'll come down and look at a few more. All-in-one SEO pack, you don't need this if you're using Yoast SEO. Google XML sitemaps, you don't need this if you're using Yoast SEO. 
WP Super Cache, so very fast caching engine for WordPress. So we're just gonna install this one. You wanna use a cache because what that does is the plugin will actually store and produce your HTML files and make your website load much faster for people. So essentially anything that speeds up your website, you wanna use for your website. So we're gonna install this one now. So MailChimp for WordPress. So if you eventually get started with an email list, you might wanna install this plugin. Keep coming down, we'll look at a few more. So Smush, so Compress, Optimize, and Lazy Load Images. I actually use Smush Pro, so it's a yearly fee, and I have it set up. I have for five websites, so eventually I'm gonna install Smush for this website. I can install it now, so we'll just leave it like that for now. So we'll come down and look at a few more. So there's some different things you can install here. You can test plugins like Auto Optimize, W3 Total Cache versus WP Super Cache. It really depends on what you wanna try for you. Disable comments, so a lot of times I'll disable comments on my website. WP Fastest Cache, another option. So that's the end of the first page of the most popular plugins. So some of the different plugins I get started with, I showed you here. So we'll activate this plugin, Smush, and we'll come down. We'll make sure all of our plugins are activated. So I'm gonna activate the classic editor. Again, you can use the WordPress block editor. You can use Elementor. There's different plugins like that that allow you to use more of a drag and drop. And what you see is what you get type editors. So we'll keep coming down. WordFriend Security will activate. Okay, so we have WordFence security set up. We'll do WP Super Cache. Okay, so it's saying here, do you want WordFence to stay up to date automatically? We'll just yes, enable auto update. That means anytime there's a new version, it's just gonna update automatically. Yoast SEO, so we'll activate this plugin. Okay, let's scroll to the bottom. So we have all these different plugins installed and activated. I need to still activate a Kismet anti-spam. Now to kind of go through this video a little bit quicker, what I'm gonna do is just show you the list of plugins that I also install in addition to the ones that I showed you. Now there's other plugins I might use over time as well. So it just really depends on the website and what I'm trying to accomplish. But some of the different plugins that I use, so Accelerated Mobile Pages, Access Press Social Share, so that's good for social media sharing, Ad Inserter, so when I want to insert specific advertisements or any Amazon affiliate code on my website, you can use Ad Inserter. Now this is a premium plugin, it's called BLT, B-I-A-L-T-Y, Bulk Image Alt Text. With Yoast SEO and WooCommerce, this is a premium plugin. Glue for Yoast SEO and Accelerated Mobile Pages. Head, Footer, and Post Injections. This one I'm actually gonna to install to show you how I install Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, and Google Search Console. Max Mega Menu, PW WooCommerce Bulk Edit Pro. This allows me to make bulk edits to my products. Q2W3 Fixed Widget. Schema and structure data for WP, SEO optimized images, simple 301 redirects, WooCommerce add to cart text change, WooCommerce direct checkout, WordPress HTTPS, and the WP Instagram widget. So these are some of the different plugins that I usually install on my website. Now, if you do a quick Google search and you just do best WordPress plugins 2020 or 2021, whatever year it is, you're gonna find a huge list of plugins based really on whatever you need your website to do. The best part about using WordPress is no matter what you want your website to do, there's probably a plugin for it out there already. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of plugins out there that you can install on your website. You don't need hundreds or thousands of plugins for your website. You just need the plugins that are gonna help you accomplish everything you need to accomplish with a WordPress website. The main ones for me are WooCommerce, WZone, Yoast SEO. Those are the ones I always start with. And then some of these other ones, I make sure I install my website, just to make sure it's a little bit easier to use, or I can install the features that I want to install my website. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to install this head, footer, and post injections plugin on my website so that I can install Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, and Google Search Console. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna install. What you do is just come to plugins, you add new plugin, and all you need to do is search that plugin. So we'll do, okay, and here's what that plugin looks like right here. You can see 200,000 plus active act installations and five-star reviews. So we're gonna install it now and activate it. Okay, so if we scroll down, we can see we have this plugin here, head, footer, and post injections. So what we can do is we can come over here to settings and what you're gonna see is header and footer. So we're gonna come over here for our settings. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up Google Tag Manager. So if you have a Google account, you can easily create a Tag Manager account. So you just go to tagmanager.google.com. It should open a page that looks something like this. And what you wanna do is click on Create Account. Now the other thing we're gonna do is open up Google Analytics. You wanna to go to the Admin screen for your Google Analytics account. You can see right now I have my Beachfront Decor account open. So all of my accounts are under the same analytics umbrella through my Corey at surfsideppc.com email. So what I'm gonna do under account here is create account. 
And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Google Search Console. So for this, google.com slash search console. Again, if you're having trouble finding any of these links, do a quick Google search for Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Google Search Console. It'll always be the top result there. In Google Search Console, what we want to do is click on this drop down and go to Add Property. So what we're going to do is add the property. And for right now, I'm going to use the URL prefix method. You could also use the domain method here, but I'm going to use URL prefix. And what I'm going to do is HTTPS, and we're just going to do wickerguide.com. That's going to be the URL prefix that I'm going to use for Google Search Console. So let's come back over here. I'm not going to do anything yet. Just keep this as is. Let's come back over here to Google Tag Manager, and we'll set this up. Okay, so account name is going to be Wicker Guide. Country is going to be United States. I'm not going to share data anonymously. We'll just leave that unchecked for right now. Container setup. So what we'll do is just wickerguide.com. Target platform is going to be web. And you can also use accelerated mobile pages for a separate account, but I'm just going to use web and click on create. So now we have to accept the terms of service agreement. So we'll come down, click on it, and we'll click on yes. So now we need to install Google Tag Manager. So the reason that we're using this head, footer, and post injections plugin is because it makes it really easy to install Google Tag Manager. And then we can use Google Tag Manager to install and activate Google Analytics and Google Search Console. So we'll come over here. We'll take this code first. So paste this code as high in the head of the page as possible. So we're gonna come over here on every page, enter this. So we're just gonna enter that code right here. So we'll scroll down here immediately after the body tag. So we're gonna come back over to Google Tag Manager. Additionally, paste this code immediately after the opening body tag. So we're gonna take this code right here. We're gonna copy it, come back over, and we're gonna paste this code right here for desktop and for mobile. So we wanna make sure we have this activated on desktop and mobile. And all we need to do now is click on save and Google Tag Manager is installed on our website. So it's really that simple to install it using WordPress. So what we can do is click on the okay now and pretty much we have Google Tag Manager on our website. Now, if you just wanna double check that, what you can do is you can install the Google Tag Assistant plugin. This is a Chrome extension. So I have this installed already on my Google Chrome. So what I can do is just come back over to wickerguide.com. We'll refresh the page and now you can see it's refreshed. So what we can do is come over here to our Tag Assistant and what we're gonna do is click on enable. So we're gonna enable it, refresh the page one more time. And if we click on Tag Assistant, you can see we have Google Tag Manager here. Okay, now what we wanna do is publish our container. So it's saying add tags and publish to make your changes live. So we're just gonna click on submit and we're just gonna do publish container. And we'll just do the same thing here, container, and we're gonna click on publish. Okay, so this is our live version one. You can see over here, if we come back to our workspace, we have our live version published a few seconds ago by Corey at surfsidepbc.com. So we'll come back over to our website and what you can do to make sure that you have Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, make sure you have all these tags on your website is use the Tag Assistant by Google Chrome extension. So if you're using Google Chrome, you can use the Tag Assistant. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that you have the tags properly installed on your website. So we're gonna refresh the page here. And now what we can do is come over to Tag Assistant. We can click on Tag Assistant and you can see right here, we have our Google Tag Manager tag here. And since it's green, that means it's set up properly. So now we have Google Tag Manager installed on our website. So we're ready to start adding our Analytics tag, our Google Search Console. So with Analytics, we're gonna come over here. We're creating our Analytics account. So account name, what we're gonna do is Wicker Guide. Keep coming down. We can just keep all of these checked, so that's fine. We'll click on Next. What do we wanna measure? So it's gonna be web. So if you can do apps in web, if you're also gonna have a mobile app, I'm not for wickerguide.com. So we're gonna click on next. Website name, wicker guide, website URL. So we're gonna choose HTTPS and we're gonna do wickerguide.com. Industry category. So from here, we're gonna select home and garden. So you just wanna choose the best category for the website you're creating. Reporting time zone. Usually I'll just check my own time zone, which is the Eastern time zone. So we'll just come down here and we'll do New York time. Okay, we'll click on create. Now we'll have to accept the Google Analytics terms of service agreement. So we'll accept this, scroll down, accept this and accept. Okay, so we have our property created now. So what we wanna do is we wanna install our Google Analytics using Google Tag Manager. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to Google Tag Manager. Since Tag Manager is already installed on our Wicker Guide website, we can install everything just directly through this Tag Manager interface. So we're gonna to click to add a new tag and what we'll name our tag is just Google Analytics, tag configuration. Now you're gonna see there's a bunch of different options down here. At the very top is Google Analytics Universal Analytics. So we're gonna click right here, 
track type is going to be page view select settings variable what we're going to have to do is set up a new variable so with our new variable it's going to be our google analytics settings so we're going to do google analytics tracking id we're going to click here the tracking id so what we're going to do is come over here you can see our tracking id is right here at the top so we're going to take this we're going to copy it come over to google tag manager and paste it so now we can click on save so this is going to be our new variable is our google analytics tracking id so that's all we need to do and we can click on trigger and trigger it on all pages so essentially what this means is every time someone visits any page on our website it's going to trigger on every single page the google analytics tag so now we can click on save and then what we can do is click on submit so once we submit this it's added google analytics and we'll just copy and paste this here and we'll publish it okay so we have one tag added one variable added that's our google analytics tracking id so now if we come back over to our website we'll refresh the page again and we'll click on the tag assistant plugin up here at the top so if we click on tag assistant you can see now we have our google analytics tag added and we have google tag tag manager installed so if we come over to analytics we're going to see ua16734 so you just want to make sure that matches your tracking id so now that we have both our tag manager and google analytics installed on our website what we can do next is we just need to verify our website in the google search console so once you do this it's very easy because you're using the same google account for all three accounts we're going to open up the google search console and again we're setting up a new property so what you want to do is you click on the drop down you add a new property we're going to enter our url here so we're doing https wickerguide.com and we're going to click on continue and you can see the ownership is auto verified using google tag manager so they're able to find the Google Tag Manager account for wickerguide.com and we're able to connect our website directly through the Google Search Console. So now what we can do is go directly to our property and we're pretty much all good to go. You might get a message down here in the bottom right. Your site has been switched to mobile first indexing. We could just click on got it. Processing data. So since it's a brand new website, there's probably not going to be anything in the performance to begin with because we have no content. Nothing is appearing in the search results yet. So what I generally do when I set up Google Search Console is I add my sitemap directly to Google Search Console and my sitemap is generated using the Yoast SEO plugin that I went over earlier. So what we want to do is go into our back end for our WordPress website. We're going to open up the Yoast SEO plugin page and what we want to do is we want to come over here to the features tab. So we're going to click on features and you're going to see all these features are currently turned to on for us and right here xml sitemaps so if we go and click here you can see see the xml sitemap so all you need to do is click on the question mark see the xml sitemap and regardless of your website url your sitemap for yoast seo is always going to be your domain name slash sitemap index.xml so what we're going to do is we're going to take this page right here we're going to copy we're going to come over to our sitemap so you see we have https wickerguide.com enter the sitemap url and just click on submit Okay, so our sitemap was submitted successfully. So it says Google will periodically process it and look for changes. You will be notified if anything goes wrong with it in the future. I've never really had any issues with it. Now, if you see couldn't fetch, I wouldn't worry about that right now. You can always come in here and click on it and you can see right now it's saying process successfully. So I really don't have many URLs right now because I haven't created new content. So what's good about using the Yoast SEO plugin is your XML sitemap is always gonna stay up to date. So if we come over here, you don't have to change anything about this when you're creating new posts, when you're creating new pages, when you're creating new products, categories, when you're creating anything, basically, it's going to continuously update your sitemap and the Google Search Console is able to track and watch that sitemap at all times. So as you're creating new pages, it becomes easier for them to index your pages into the Google Search Engine. So now we can get started with adding our products using Amazon. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our website. So we're going to come back here right now. I'm at my homepage. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go to dashboard. So if we click on dashboard, I want to show you how to add product categories and how to add products to your website. The first thing you want to do is you want to increase your current memory limit. So they're saying we recommend setting memory to at least 128 megabytes. So what we can do is click on this URL, increasing memory allocated to PHP. And what it's going to say is this page was moved to editing wpconfig.php. So it's actually very easy to add this. Now they're going to have a huge, huge list of everything you can edit in your wpconfig PHP file. Now what you want to do is you want to come over here on the right hand side and you want to find the link for increasing memory allocated to PHP. 
You can also just do a Google search, increasing memory allocated to PHP, WordPress, and you'll get the same exact article coming up. I'll put this link in the video description. Essentially, any links that I go over in this video, I'm gonna put in the video description so you can easily find them. So increasing memory allocated to PHP, you're gonna see define WP memory limit, and you can see you can increase it to 64 megabytes, 96 megabytes. They're recommending we increase it to 128 megabytes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right here. We're just gonna copy it for right now. We're gonna end up editing this. Now you can skip this step if you want for now. So if you just wanna fast forward a little bit to me adding the actual products, then you can fast forward to that portion. You can check the video description for all the different timestamps that we have throughout this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our Bluehost account. So I have my wickerguide.com dedicated Bluehost account open. And what we wanna do is we wanna open File Manager. So if we come over and we scroll down, we have File Manager here. So we're gonna click on File Manager and we're gonna open it up for wickerguide.com. So right now I also have my website floorjackcenter.com hosted on this same dedicated hosting account, but eventually I'm gonna have it on its own account. So we have wickerguide.com, we're gonna click on Submit. And what you wanna do is click on the public HTML. So we're gonna click on public HTML. And right now we're looking at our website essentially for wickerguide.com. So these are all of our website files. So we can actually take this WP config sample and just delete it. This is a sample WP config file that your website doesn't actually need. So we're just gonna confirm and delete this. Usually when you install WordPress, they're gonna install that sample file as well. And what we wanna do is open our WP config.php file. So we're gonna click on this file and we're gonna click on edit and we're gonna click on edit again. So I scroll down just a little bit in my WP config file and right beneath this define WB collate, so the database collate type. So what we're gonna do is come down here and we're gonna paste this code, define WP memory limit. And instead of 96, we're just gonna change this to 128. So now what we're doing is we're changing our WordPress memory limit to 128 megabytes. So that's gonna allow us to make sure we're adding products and we don't have to deal with downtime to our website. So we're gonna click on save changes. Okay, so success, our file has been saved. So now we can get rid of these pages. We're gonna exit out of both of them. We can exit out of our Bluehost account. And what we can do is we're gonna come back over. So right now you see current memory limit, 40 megabytes. So now we can just dismiss this notice. So we have it all set up properly. So we don't need to worry about that notice anymore. Now, a few different things we can do at this point. One thing I can do is just come over to my website and customize the way it looks. But what I wanna show you is adding products. So that's the main portion of this video. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come back over to our backend and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna to go to products and we're gonna to go to categories. So before you add products, I recommend creating your categories. Usually what I'll do is I'll create one category at a time and then I'll add products to each of those different categories. Right now it's saying, welcome to WooCommerce, set up your store and start selling. Since my store is specifically just an external affiliate store where if people click on my links, they're gonna go directly to Amazon, I'm gonna skip setup. So I don't have to worry about setup at this point. I'm gonna be importing all of my different products as external affiliate products, which I'll show you as we go. So you can see here, add your first product, personalize your store, set up tax, set up payments. So the way this actually works is we don't have to set up tax, we don't have to set up payments. All payments are gonna be processed directly through Amazon. All returns are gonna be processed through Amazon. Our main goal is just to drive clicks to Amazon. So essentially, the main thing that we need to do is create a website with Wicker furniture, all sorts of Wicker products, and make it as easy to use as possible. So when people are searching for Wicker products, when people use social media and they have an interest in Wicker products, we're able to drive them to our website and ultimately get them to click through to our affiliates. When they purchase something, we make revenue. So that's really the goal for these types of websites. So we're not gonna come into WooCommerce right now. We're gonna go back to products and categories. And what you're gonna see here is you're automatically gonna have this uncategorized category created. So you don't really need to worry about this category. We can just go and create brand new categories. So what I can start with is something like Wicker Furniture. I could do Wicker Baskets. This is where your keyword research is gonna come into play. Now I'm gonna do a completely separate video on search engine optimization. The other thing that I wanna mention is I went over plugins. I'm gonna do a completely separate video about installing and configuring all of the plugins. So because this is gonna be such a long video to begin with, I really wanna show people how to set up the website, how to import products, and then I'm gonna go through every little detail as we continue to go. So there will be multiple portions to this video and maybe eventually I'll do a complete course of building a website like this and it's gonna end up being four or five hours long just because it does take a lot of time to create these types of websites. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating our product categories. So what I'm gonna start with is just Wicker Furniture and we're gonna do wicker furniture. 
we'll scroll down. We want to write a description here. So what I'll do is just something like, okay, so this is a good description for now. Discover the top rated indoor wicker furniture and outdoor wicker furniture for your home. We absolutely love everything wicker at wicker guide, and you can find the best wicker material furniture for sale here. Display type, usually I'll do both. So that means that if there's any products and subcategories within this category, which there will be subcategories, plenty of them. So I wanna make sure they're both listed and you can keep it your default display type as both for every single category. That's usually the way that I set it up. Now parent category, so I'm gonna go through this as we create our next category. But what you're gonna see is you can set a parent category as you're creating new ones. So if within wicker furniture, you have indoor wicker furniture, outdoor wicker furniture, wicker chairs, wicker seating, and then eventually wicker rocking chairs, which is what I'm eventually gonna to get to, that's where you wanna set up some parent categories and then some child categories. So this will be a parent category. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload our thumbnail. So when people ask me where they can use thumbnails from, which images they can use, you don't have any issues with using images directly from Amazon. Since you're sending traffic directly to the Amazon website and you have some of these different products on your website, they're driving sales for these companies. So these companies don't have a problem with you using their images as your product category images or any of these images on your website because you are gonna be sending people directly to these products. So what I can do is say, I wanna take a product like this for wicker furniture so whatever you use to edit images we can just take this image we'll copy it and then i'm going to open up microsoft paint and then what we can do is come here and paste it so you can see it's already a square image so since it's a square image it's 1500 by 1500 is the size of the image so it might be getting cut off here but you can see 1500 by 1500 i'll just come to image i'll resize it and we'll just do 325 so usually I'll just do 325 pixels by 325 pixels so that all my images are the same size. So we can zoom in here a little bit. And all I'm going to do is save this image as wicker furniture. So I want to make sure all my image names match exactly the categories that I'm creating. So we're going to come here to file and we're going to save this. Now what we can do is come back over here to thumbnail and we're going to upload our image here. Okay, so we have our first image uploaded and what I'll do is I'll just take this title, we'll copy it and we'll paste it here in the alt text field. Okay, so now we're going to use this image. So now we have this category created. So that's exactly how I create categories. So what we can do is click on add new category and we're immediately going to have a product category here. So you can see wicker furniture. We have the description here. So it's being cut off just because my page isn't fully expanded right now. So we have wicker furniture. So now what we want to do is add some different subcategories. So what I think I'm going to do for my categories is we're going to start with wicker furniture. So a lot of different subcategories are going to be within this category. And I'm just going to do wicker chairs. And then within wicker chairs is going to be things like wicker dining chairs, wicker rocking chairs, wicker lounge chairs. So we're going to have all of those different subcategories. So essentially what I have to do is create two more categories now. So I'm going to kind of fast forward through this a little bit and we're gonna pick it up when I'm creating the wicker rocking chairs category. Okay, so as you can see here, we've added our wicker furniture category. You're gonna see this hyphen right here, wicker chairs. So that means it's a subcategory of wicker furniture. So when you're creating your new categories and you're creating subcategories, you do it just like a standard category, but right here, you're gonna click on this dropdown and you wanna select. So we have wicker rocking chairs is gonna be a subcategory of wicker chairs, which is a subcategory of wicker furniture. So we're gonna click right on our parent category and all we need to do is set our description. We have the name here, we have the URL, we keep coming down, we uploaded our thumbnail so we can add our new category here. So it's gonna put that new category right onto our list and now we're able to start importing products for wicker rocking chairs. So we're gonna come over to Amazon and we're gonna open up our page that we've had open for a while with wicker rocking chairs, but what we're gonna to have to do since we just created new categories for our website is refresh the page. Okay, so you can see here we have the product that we want to import directly to our website. So all we need to do is come up here, click right here to open up the categories, and it's gonna say auto detect categories from Amazon. You need to always set your categories first. So you wanna set your category to wicker rocking chairs. We're gonna click on close right here, and we're gonna to click to import this product. Now, right now it's importing. You're seeing product was successfully added into the database with ID 13. Click here to view the product. So we're gonna view the product. It's gonna open up the page directly on our website. Best choice products, outdoor wicker rocking chair for patio, porch, deck with weather resistant cushions, red. So you can see it imported these different images. So the way we have this set up right now, and we're gonna switch this right now, but what you're gonna see is we're gonna come down. If we click on add to cart, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna add this product to our cart. This is not how I like to set up my websites. So you can set your websites up this way. I'm not stopping you from doing that. 
But what I would recommend doing is we're going to come back over to, so for now, we're just going to get rid of this out of our cart. So what we want to do is come into the back end of our website. We're going back to the WooZone plugin. So you're going to click on WooZone. You're going to click on config. So for Amazon configuration, and you're going to come over here to plugin setup. And you want to make sure double check, triple check that your on-site cart is set to no. So we're going to set this to no. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to save the settings and make sure that these settings completely save. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we have our options updated successfully. We're going to come up to the top here and we're going to go over and just make sure under Amazon setup. So we're going to go back to Amazon setup. Just make sure as we scroll down that your affiliate ID is right here. So I have my United States affiliate ID wicker 07 dash 20, and you want to come down and save that as well. So to make sure you have the right affiliate ID. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our product page again. So we're going to come back over. We're in our dashboard. So to find the products that you publish, you're going to see you have posts here. This is for all of your blog posts. You have pages here. This is for all of your static pages. And now what we're going to do is come over to products, click on all products. And if we scroll down, you can see we have our one product that we've imported so far. We're going to click on view. So we're going to view it and open link and new tab. So now we have the product open here. And now you can see as we scroll down, so it's saying United States available. So we're going to click on buy product. So when we click on buy product, you can see it's sending people to Amazon and it has our tag here, wicker 07 20. Now it should open in a new tab. That's something that I'm going to go back and fix. But you can see here, every time someone clicks on one of those links and they go to this page, whether they purchase this rocking chair, maybe they just go through Amazon and purchase whatever else they purchase through Amazon, we're going to get a cut, a commission for every single sale that we drive. So even if someone comes here and they add 10 different things to their cart or they add 15 of these rocking chairs to their cart, maybe they're buying them for a hotel or a resort or something like that, you're going to get credit for all of those different products that you sell. And you're going to import all of your products with this WZone Direct Import plugin. You can see once you import a product, you're going to get this notice here, duplicate product detected, and this will be the product ID that we have. So it's already imported, so it won't let us import it again. If you try to import it again, let's just come here, make sure we have the right category, and you try to import it, it's just going to give you an error message. Product is already imported, already exists in the database. So if you have that, you can't import the same product multiple times. So generally what I'll do when I am adding products is I'll just come into Amazon. We'll go back to all departments. We'll just search right here, wicker rocking chair. And then I'll look at all the different rocking chairs. And let's just say I want to add this one to my website. Now, one issue you might run into. So for this one, I can't add it to the website because there's no price. So you're going to see available from these sellers. If there's no price here, I can't import this product to my website. So even though this is perfect for my website, I cannot import it. So we're going to go back. And what I'll usually do is I'll open up a bunch of different products. So we'll take this one right here. We'll open it. We'll take these right here. We'll open it. And we'll just keep doing that, opening all these different products here. And then what you can do is after you import a rocking chair and we come up here with where to import and we click on this import in category, it's going to automatically opt to the category where we've been adding products to. So I click on close. I click on this product to import it. Product was successfully added into my database with ID 20. So we can view the product, but I'm going to click on close. So we're going to come back over here. So we have this product right here. So I can come here again. You don't have to check this every time, but I'm just showing you. It's going to keep opening every single product page we open with Rick Wicker rocking chairs or any type of product. It's going to show this category. So every time we're importing products with what I'll do is I'll take a specific category and add as many as possible into that category at once. Usually I try to get over 100 if I can. Sometimes it's just 25 to 50. Really depends how many products Amazon has that I think are good enough for my website. So we'll click on close and we're going to import this product here. And now you can see we have three different products successfully added to our website. So if we come back over to our website again, so we're just going to come right here. We're going to visit the website. And right now it's really hard to find our shop. So we're going to have to assign a menu. But all you have to do is go to wickerguide.com and we'll do slash shop. And you can see our three different products here. So when people do click on these different products, so let's just say we're clicking on this new one here. So we have this imported, it's saying not available in the United States, but if we click on buy product and we go through, looks like it's available right now. So that's another thing that I'm going to get rid of. So I went through all these W zone config. You're going to see duplicate product detected up here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come back over here and we're just going to go through them again. Cause I just want to make sure I have it all set up properly. So on site cart is no. Okay. So a few of these that I changed. So show coupon, I usually set to no, this is no, no for checkout emails gallery will set to no. So we'll keep scrolling down here. 
These are set to yes. I usually do redirect in one second. Keep scrolling down. Activate product availability by country box. So that's the box that I just showed you. For this, I'm gonna do no. So product availability by country, saying before add to cart button, so that's fine. So we have this set to no, I don't want this to be shown. Show country flag on cart page, we're gonna do no. Country flags as links, no. Keep scrolling down. Show availability icon, so this right now is set to yes. Activate product price disclaimer. So I'm gonna actually increase this to one. So I actually thought I set that previously, but it must have not set it. Date format, I usually do month, day, and year. And then we're gonna save these settings again. Okay, so we have options updated successfully. So now the other thing I wanna do is make sure that all of these are opening in a brand new tab. So over here with product buy button, with custom tasks, I'm just gonna do learn more. So usually that's how I do. I've seen other websites that do something like buy now on Amazon. So you can test both of those things. There's really nothing wrong with testing them. That's something I'm actually gonna test with my website. So take a week with buy now on Amazon, see how my conversion rates look and how my overall revenue looks. But for custom text, we're gonna come over here and just do learn more and then open in and we're gonna do new tab. So I like to open it in a new tab. So if someone does click on a product and they wanna go back to my website, they actually still have my website open. So we're gonna come down here again and we're gonna click on save again. So we're gonna go back to our product page. So we'll come over here to products, all products, and we'll just open up this most recent one. Now, one thing you can do is if you wanna shorten these titles a little bit, you can use a bulk editing plugin. So the one that I use is PW Bulk Edit. It is a premium plugin or you can just come in here and edit each of these individual products. So if we click on the edit page, or you could just quick edit it and just edit this title. So if I want this title to be shortened, I can shorten this title. So we're just gonna click on cancel for now and I'm gonna view this product. But if you're going in to edit it, this is a little bit easier. So you can see we have this different product here. So you're looking at the visual, you can look at the text. So the way the text looks, it's gonna start with the product gallery. So we're gonna keep scrolling down you can see we have the way it looks. So we have the title. You can put a meta description in here. It's not required. It does help with SEO if you're adding them. So these are all added as external affiliate products. So you're gonna see product URL and then button text, regular price. So we actually have to install a different plugin to change all of our button text, but we'll do that in a little bit. Product short description. So if we come over here, you're gonna see this is our product short description at the top. We have learn more. We increase the size of this Amazon price. I do need to change this to a dollar sign. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Keep scrolling down. So this is our full description here. And then there's related products down here at the bottom. Now we can adjust some of these different, so the categories, archives, and meta. We can adjust some of those things on what actually shows on our website. But if someone comes to this product page now, they click on learn more, opens in a new tab, and you can see we have our tag Wicker 0720 here. So really the goal now is just to continue adding as many products as possible and also adding blog posts. So the best thing you can do to actually drive more organic search traffic to your website is create blog posts for your product style pages. So what that means is if you have a product category for rocking chairs, we wanna create a blog post about Wicker rocking chairs, and then I wanna list every single product. So the way to do that is to come over and we're gonna go back to our dashboard. We're gonna scroll down here to plugins and we're gonna to go to add new. And the plugin that we're gonna add here is gonna be called WooCommerce Shortcodes. So we're gonna do that one, we're gonna click on enter. Okay, so WooCommerce Shortcodes, we're gonna install now and we're gonna activate it. Okay, so we got this plugin activated. Okay, so if we scroll down here, you're gonna see WooCommerce shortcodes. So we have this plugin installed now. So if you're not familiar with shortcodes, what they allow you to do is list specific products, list products from a category. So there's a lot of different things you can do with shortcodes. So what I would recommend doing is going directly to Google and just searching WooCommerce shortcodes or finding this URL in the video description. So it's docs.woocommerce.com slash document slash WooCommerce shortcodes. These are all the different shortcodes you can use. So if you come over here to the right hand side, they have how to use them, page, products, product categories, product page, related products, add to cart. So there's a lot of different things you can do with shortcodes. The main thing that I generally do is if we come back over and let's just say I'm adding a new blog post. So I'm coming over to my list of blog posts. So we'll go to posts and all posts here. And you can see we have hello world here. So what we can do now is click on trash. Okay, so let's just say we wanna add a new blog post. So we're gonna click on add new here. Okay, so we're using editor. You can use the UX builder. So it really depends on what you're more comfortable using. I just prefer to use the classic editor. So that's what I'm gonna to continue to use. So we're gonna click on X here. We're gonna click on okay. We're just gonna use the classic editor. And what I'm in is the text portion right here. 
So usually when I'm creating a blog post based on a product category, we'll come over here to add title and we'll just do best wicker rocking chairs for sale. Now the way WooCommerce shortcodes work is you have an opening bracket usually. And what you want to do is products category equals, and we're going to do two quotes. We're going to do columns equal three and we're gonna do limit equals, and you just wanna set a limit for how many products you wanna show here. So for example, if you have a product category with 500 different products, you only wanna show 300 of them, then you just set a limit here of how many products you wanna show from that category. You can also do order by equals price, and then order equals descending. So if you do something like this, essentially what you're saying is, once we set our product category here, which I'll show you in a minute, you're saying you wanna list products with three columns, a total of 300, you, you wanna order the products by price and you want the price to be ordered descending, so from high to low. So to find the product category, what you're gonna do is go to products and open up categories here. So if we come over, now once we have our list of product categories here, the way that I find the actual product category ID is I scroll over the product category and what I do is I scroll over this edit portion and you're gonna see at the very bottom of the page, it's gonna show up re really at the bottom down here. So at the very, very bottom. So once we scroll over here, you're gonna see it has taxonomy equals product cat and tag ID equals 18. So there's a number at the very bottom of the screen, tag ID equals 18. That is the product category ID for Wicker rocking chairs. If we go over Wicker chairs and we scroll over edit, the tag ID is 17. If we go to Wicker furniture, the tag ID is 16. So that's how I find product category IDs. For some reason, they don't really list them in the table. If you open up to edit or view the product category, it's pretty hard to find. So this is the way that I always find them. It's just in the URL at the very bottom. So if you look down here right now at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see tag ID equals 18. So what we do is we're gonna come back over to our blog post. We have our products category equals 18 and we can actually set some of our content here. So we'll just do sample content here. Wanna adjust our URLs, make them look a little bit better here. So usually what I'll do is just wicker rocking chairs. This is gonna be my main page where I'm listing the top rated wicker rocking chairs for sale. Now the way I do my product pages is eventually I'm gonna add some products from other affiliates as well. So I'll usually work with Wayfair on everything, home decor, home furniture. And what I, have, what I can do is add a bunch of different wicker rocking chairs from Wayfair, and then I have all my products for sale from Amazon. So I essentially create a huge guide of wicker rocking chairs, and it's all gonna be affiliate products, so I don't have to worry about stocking or shipping or returns or anything like that. This is why I prefer to set up websites like this, because I could really just focus on the marketing side and the content side, and essentially growing my traffic through search engines and from social media. So if we click here on publish, it's gonna create our first blog post, now, I wanna adjust the URLs. I don't like the dates being in the URL here. So we're gonna come down, before we even look at our blog posts, before I forget to do this, let's come to settings and go to permalinks. And you're gonna see the common settings here. So it's gonna have this with the date and then the sample post at the very end. We're just gonna do custom structure and all we're gonna do is post name. So we're gonna take all this away and we're just gonna do post name here. So there's no dates or anything in the URLs. It's just gonna be wickerguide.com slash wickerrockingchairs. So if we come down, you can do the same exact thing for your shop. So you can see here, product category, product tag. So what we can do is we can actually shorten these for the categories as well. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just do product cat and we'll just do keep this as product tag. And then for category base, we'll just do cat. For tag base, we'll just do tag. Okay, so that's good right there. So you can see here with product permalinks, we just have it set up as a custom base. So it's just gonna be product here. We can also do it with the category, but I just prefer to do the custom base and we can click on save changes. Okay, so you definitely wanna set up your permalinks in the very beginning because when you do change a bunch of different URLs at once, it could mess with your search engine optimization. Since this is a brand new website, since this is really my first piece of content, the first products that I'm adding, it's not gonna have really any impact on my website. If I were to do this right now with beachfrontdecor.com, it would probably really hurt my search engine optimization traffic for a little bit while Google has to update all these new URLs. You're gonna have a ton of old URLs that are indexed that are giving 404 errors because there's nothing at those URLs. So these URLs are showing where to find this content on the back end of our website. So now if we come over here, we're going back to our product categories first. Let's just say we open up our Wicker furniture page. We click on view. Okay, so you can see up here, wickerguide.com, product cat, wicker furniture. 
So you can see we have our first category in here. We have some of our different products for sale in here. Now the other thing we can do, we're gonna come back over to our homepage and right on our homepage, you can see best wicker rocking chairs for sale. So we're gonna click on this and you can see since we're using that short code, you can see we have our products here and people can click through to these different product pages. And you can also see our link at the top is just wickerguide.com slash wicker rocking chairs. So you want to set up your permalinks in the very beginning. It's probably something I should have done as we set up the website. But if you do it right now, there's really no problem with that. It's not going to mess up any of the different pages that we have on our website. So if we come back over here to our blog posts, you can see we have our first blog post published, best wicker rocking chairs for sale. Obviously you wanna add more content to that page. So as I continue to work on that page and improve it, we can continue to add some content here. What I wanna show you next is we're just gonna come directly to our homepage and we're gonna to go to customize. So under customize, what we wanna do is just adjust some of these different settings here. And let's start at the very top. So add anything here or just remove it. So if we come over here to header and you look at it, you can see right here, HTML one is the add anything here or remove it. Our logo is right here. You can see search icon. So that's the search icon main menu. So this is our main menu here, account and cart page. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this, my account and the cart page, because I don't really want people to access either of those pages. So we're not going to show label. So that's going to get rid of the page up here. So now we're going to click on cart, do the same exact thing. So we're going to scroll down, show cart totals, show cart title. So we're not going to show any of that. So for cart down here, we'll do get rid of show cart totals, get rid of show cart title. But the other thing we can do is if you just come over here to the header builder for Flatsum, is you can take this account link right here and just put it down to the bottom. You can take this divider, put it down to the bottom and you can take the cart link and put it down to the bottom as well. So that's going to get rid of all of those up at the top right corner. And now what we can do is maybe change our logo. We can update this right here. So HTML one. So that's where it says add anything here or just remove it. So I can just come over here to HTML one and just remove it altogether. Now you might want to leave that there. Maybe you want to do something like shop our best deals or something along those lines. But what we can also do is you have top bar menu up here. So you might want to set a menu specifically for your top bar. You probably want to set a menu here as well. Now you have newsletter and social icons. I'm just gonna leave those up here for now. What you can do is if you click on social icons, all you need to do is update these URLs. So once you have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, a Pinterest page, you just come in here, enter the URL, and then when people visit your website, they can click through to some of these different pages and find you on social media. They can click for your newsletter and sign up for your newsletter. So you can set all of that up very easily. I usually set it up with the search icon right here. We have our logo. So we'll come down here, we're gonna click on logo, and what you can see is we have our logo image, so I'm gonna remove this. I created a basic logo for right now. You can also just remove it, and it's just gonna have some text here, which is fine, but I'm gonna upload a new logo. So I'm gonna select the image. Okay, so I uploaded my logo here. As you can see in our media library, every time you import a product, it's gonna actually download those images directly to your website. So that's why I recommend using dedicated web hosting because once you start adding a thousand products, you're gonna have thousands of images you need to store for your website. So you really need good hosting to host this type of website. So if we come over here, you can see I have a logo that I've created. So it's 400 by 84 pixels. We have our title, we'll just enter that as the alt text here as well. We're gonna click on select. Okay, so we have our new logo up here. Not the greatest logo in the world. I'm still gonna end up getting a brand new logo. It actually cut off the top portion a little bit. So maybe I can re-upload this. But for right now, we have our little logo at the top. So we can click on close. So anytime you make changes in here, you have to click on publish. So what we're gonna do is click on publish. So let's come back out of this and we're gonna sign a menu and I'm gonna do a couple other things in the back end for the website. So we're gonna click on the X up here. So anytime you wanna get into the portion you just saw me in, you just wanna click on customize. That's gonna allow you to customize everything that's happening on your website, which I'll show you in a minute. But what we wanna do is we're gonna come back here to dashboard. And the next thing I wanna do is it's keep showing these message up, messages up at the top here. You need to install default WooCommerce page, cart page, and checkout page. So all you need to do is go to pages here, go to all pages, or just add new. So if we click on add new here, we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna do cart and we'll click on publish and we're gonna add new again and we're gonna do checkout and we're gonna click on publish. Okay, so now let's go to all pages here. So one of the main pages it installs automatically is this sample page. So what we can do is just edit this and just change the name to home. So we're just gonna come over here and do home and we're gonna come over here, just do home and we're gonna click on okay. 
get rid of all this content here. So this is just showing you paragraphs, quotes, different things that you can add, but you don't really need to worry about that right now. So we have home, we're just gonna click on update. Okay, we're gonna go back to all pages again. And the next page we're gonna add is blog. So we're gonna click on add new again, and we're gonna set this as blog. Okay, so we have our pages set up, so we're gonna click on publish. The other page you probably wanna add is, is an affiliate disclaimer, so I'll go over that in a little bit. We have our privacy policy here. You wanna add one of those as well. You can use a free privacy policy generator. Just enter your brand names and they're gonna automatically show a privacy policy that you can publish to your website. So what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna come over here to settings and we're gonna to go to reading. Under reading, it's gonna say your homepage displays your latest posts. So right now our homepage is just our latest posts. What I'd rather do is use a static page. Under here for homepage, we're gonna select home. For post page, we're gonna select blog. So that's gonna turn our blog page into essentially a blog that's gonna show, right now it's showing 10 posts, syndication feeds show the most recent 10 posts. So for each post in a feed include full text, I usually just do summary and we'll click on save changes. So essentially what this does is if we come back over here, we visit our website, it's gonna give us a, a homepage. Since we have no content for our homepage, it's just empty right now. And if we come over here and we go to blog, it's gonna show our blog, all of our blog posts. So right now it's just best wicker rocking chairs for sale. As we create more blog posts, they'll show up here in the list. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come back to our back end again. We're gonna to go to WooCommerce. So we're gonna hover over WooCommerce and come down here to settings. So first thing it's showing store address. So for country state, what I'm gonna do is just switch this to United States and you can set your state here. So I currently live in South Carolina. So we're just gonna set this to South Carolina. Sell to all countries, ship to all countries you sell to. We're just gonna leave that as is. You can enable the use of coupons if you want. I'm gonna uncheck this. Currency, what we're gonna do is the United States dollar. So you can scroll down towards the bottom of the list. We're gonna do United States dollar, currency position left, thousand separator is a comma, decimal separator is a period, number of decimals is two. We're gonna click on save changes. So that's the first change I wanna make just to make sure I have US dollar showing as the dollar amount that everything costs. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to products. So we're gonna click on the products tab and then it's gonna show shop page. So from here we wanna select our shop page. So right now we don't have a shop page set up. So we have to go back to our pages and create a new one. So we're gonna do the same thing that we just did, just do shop. Okay, so shop, that's gonna be the next page that we create, click on publish. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna to need to refresh this page. Okay, and our shop page here, now it should come up. So we have shop. So everything else looks good right here. We're gonna click on save changes. Okay, so now the next thing we wanna do is come to advanced. So this is how we get rid of these two messages right here. And again, you can do this stuff right away. So if we come over here to cart page, select the page, cart. Checkout page, select a page, checkout. You can do something for my account. Terms and conditions, I'll eventually set up. Usually I'll do a terms and conditions, affiliate disclaimer, and a privacy policy. You just wanna make sure you set all those things up. But we're gonna come down here to save changes and now those two messages should go away. Settings have been saved. It's saying our cart page does not contain the short code. That's fine, we'll dismiss both these notices. I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, so from here, what we're now ready to do is we're gonna come over to appearance and we're gonna go to menus. So you wanna make sure you're setting up menus because it makes your website much easier to use if people can go through each individual menu. So we're gonna create a new menu and let's just say main menu, create, and we're just gonna keep it really simple for right now. So what we can do, we have main menu, it's gonna say display location. So there's main menu, main menu mobile, footer menu, top bar menu, and my account menu. If you're not sure what any of these are, what you can do is again, go to appearance and customize, and it'll show you where each of those menus show up. So to keep things really simple, what we'll do is we're gonna come to our pages and we'll just do view all. So under pages, we're gonna do view all. We'll do home, we'll do blog, and we'll do shop. And we're gonna add all these three to our menu. Okay, so this is the way our menu looks right now. So now the other thing we can do is if you come here to categories, any categories that you've created, WooCommerce endpoints so that you can add some of these here. You can also just add custom links if you want to. You can add individual blog posts to it. What I'll do is I'll set up a couple custom links. You can also install plugins to make sure you have all of your WooCommerce product categories listed here. So one of the plugins that I usually use is Max Mega Menu. I'm not gonna go through that right now, but you can add all of your shop subcategory pages. So let's just use custom links for right now and let's just say link text wicker furniture. 
I would highly recommend using the actual built-in menu items so you can have all of your WooCommerce categories showing up here on the left-hand side and just add them directly to your menu. It's much easier that way than using custom links, but for now, custom links are gonna do the trick. So if we come over here to our product categories, we'll click on view, copy link address, come over here, enter that URL. So we have our product category, URL, add to menu. Now what you wanna do is make sure you take this and put it as a child under shop. And then what we can do is wicker chairs. Okay, so we added wicker chairs here. So we added that as a child to wicker furniture and wicker furniture is a child to shop. So we're, we're gonna add wicker rocking chairs next. So we'll do wicker rocking chairs copy the link address for this product category, come back over here, enter the URL, add it to our menu, and we're gonna add this just like that. So now we have a few different categories here under shop. We can click on save menu. You can add more to your menu, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to our website. So we'll just come here, visit website. We're gonna look at it. And right now it's showing this menu is still not assigned. So we're gonna come back over. And what we need to do is add this to our main menu, to our main menu for mobile and we'll do it for our top bar menu, we'll click on save. Okay, so now it has been updated, we'll come back over to our website, we're gonna refresh the page, and now you can see we have a menu up at the top here. If we go to shop, you can see wicker furniture, wicker chairs, wicker rocking chairs. So I prefer to use the max mega menu because it's gonna look a lot better, but here our top bar menu, you can see we also have this up here as well, home, blog, and shop. Now for our footer menu, we don't actually have it showing down here, so that's something we're gonna have to go to customize, to customize and add to our website. Now, the one thing I wanna show you in the customized portion is if we come over here, we're gonna to go to our blog, we're gonna click on the best wicker rocking chairs for sale. So when someone comes into one of my blog posts and they see all these products here, you can see right now they can click through these each individual products. But what I like to do is I'm gonna come over here to customize and we're gonna come over here to WooCommerce. So if we come over to WooCommerce, first things first is store noticed. Not gonna have any store notice here, so we're just gonna get rid of this for right now. Okay, come back here, product catalog. So this is how our product shop pages with the individual category pages are gonna look. So before anyone clicks on a product, when you have a listing of products, it's essentially called your product catalog. So on the shop page, what I wanna show are categories and products. On the category display, what I wanna show are subcategories and products. So that's what I prefer to do because then it's gonna show this category page here. When I click on wicker furniture, it'll show the wicker chairs subcategory. So people can easily find all the different subcategories on my website. So that's first things first, we're gonna keep coming down. And now with the catalog layout, you're gonna see here on the left-hand side, you can either do no sidebar. So with no sidebar, it's just gonna list your product categories and your products for sale. You can do a left sidebar, a right sidebar, or you can do an off canvas. So that allows people to click on essentially a menu that's gonna be at the top. So I'm just gonna keep it as left sidebar. I like to use the list style. You can use this type of style as well. So it'll have lists like this. I just prefer to use this like a grid. You can also do a grid like this with different sizes. So I'm just gonna keep it as a list style. Scroll down, products per page, usually I'll increase this a lot. So I'll increase it to 48 per now. So I prefer to have pages with a lot of products on them. And a lot of times I'll even increase the amount of products per page. Products per row desktop three, per row tablet three, and per row mobile two. So we're gonna keep that as is keep coming down. So under title style, so right now it's not showing the title at all. So if I click on show title, it's gonna show shop up here at the top. We can click on this and see how this looks. So it looks a little bit different. So we can use this. We can change all of these colors as well. I'll show you how to do that. So let's just keep it like that. We'll show the title, show home link in breadcrumb. So that's right here. So we have home and shop and then featured image as background. I just have this, but there's no featured image set. So we'll keep coming down breadcrumbs. So this home and shop is your breadcrumbs. So breadcrumb size, you can change the size here. We can do breadcrumb case, uppercase or normal. So I'm just gonna leave this as is. Next is gonna be category box style. So that's this right here. I like to personally use this category box. This is my favorite style. But let's just say we choose this right here. Then wicker furniture is gonna go to the bottom of the picture. If we choose this right here, it's gonna to go towards the bottom and it's gonna be a little square like that. So whatever you're most comfortable with, that's what you wanna select. I personally like to use this one right here. It's just a matter of preference. Keep coming down. Next is gonna be product box. So what you're gonna see is we're looking at this right here. It's product and price. I like to center it. So it's gonna be centered underneath each individual product. So that's how I prefer to do it. 
So product image hover style, I usually just leave this as is. You can go through all these different options here, but I just usually leave it as back image fade in. So we're gonna keep scrolling down. Add to cart button. So I do like to use the add to cart button, and then I'm gonna use this right here. So we're gonna do this over on the right hand side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add a learn more button at the bottom of our products. So button style, you can adjust that if you want to. So this is exactly how I like to do it. And we're gonna click on publish. The reason why I like to do it like this is because if we come back over to our blog and when I have my listing of different products for sale, so we have our best wicker rocking chairs for sale, people can easily just click on that learn more button right here and go directly to Amazon. So it won't let me click while I'm in this customized section. So we'll just come over here and we're going to click on learn more. It's going to open up that Amazon product. This helps drive a lot more clicks by using that exact style. So when you're creating blog posts, that's what I would recommend doing is using these product category short descriptions. And one of my favorite things to do is let's just say I create a blog post, which is essentially just going to be a page wicker furniture for sale. I can do different subcategories. I can do different products for sale in addition to all the different texts that I have on my page. And that's going to help my pages rank in Google, in other search engines. And that's really how you're going to drive the majority of your traffic. So that's ultimately going to be your goal. Now, the next thing I want to go over is changing the color scheme here. So if we come back over, we went through WooCommerce a little bit. You can adjust the way your product pages look, your payments icons, your product images, checkout cart, my account. You can adjust all of these different types of things with the Flatsome theme and really with any theme that you're using. So what we're going to adjust next is style. So we're going to click on style here and you're going to see colors, global styles, typography, custom CSS, and image light box. So with colors here, you can see primary, secondary, success, alert. So with primary colors, let's change this and let's do something more closer to a brown. So we'll just select this color right here. So that's going to change this color up at the very top. We can do a darker brown here to make sure it closely matches our logo. So wicker guide. So this will be essentially one of our main colors. And you can see our buttons are going to change colors. The quick view is going to change colors. So your primary color can change very easily by just coming right into colors. So secondary color, let's make it a little bit darker. So we'll do this right here. Success color and alert color, we'll just leave as is, but you can adjust your colors and this is something you can test as well. So maybe you wanna try a brown color since wicker furniture is, I would say the main color that they have is brown, then that's the color that I wanna use. So if we keep coming down, you can also do for your text. So we can see sample content here. So for this text, let's just say I wanna choose black text. It's gonna change this color to black. So I prefer to just use black text. You can also just do a dark gray. So it just depends on matter of preference again. Headline color, so coming up here, this is our headline. So I can change my headline color to really anything I want to. So let's just select red for now. Doesn't look good at all, but you can change it to that. Maybe what I wanna do is use the same as my primary color. So we'll just come in here, copy, come down to our headline color and we'll paste it. See how that looks. And it's not too bad, so we'll just leave that. Okay, so divider color, so you can adjust a specific divider color. So this is what a divider looks like. So usually for this, I'll just do something like dark gray. We'll just leave it as black for now. So, okay, so link colors hover, widget link colors. So all of these, you can adjust all of these different colors here. So right now I'm gonna leave everything as is. I think it looks okay, so we're gonna click on publish. So that'll change our color scheme up a little bit. And I like to change my color scheme to make sure that my colors look the way I want them to. You can change your link color. So this is a link right here. So I can change my link color to, let's just look at something a little different. And now it's a little bit more blue. So I'll do that as my link cover. And for hover, it's gonna be black. So we'll publish this. And I think that looks good for right now. Again, we can always change all of these things, but for right now, I like the way this looks. So we'll come back, we'll click on back here. You can adjust the way your blog looks for all these customized options here. So I would just recommend going through each of these individual options under the customize when you're customizing the way your website looks. Right now our website looks pretty good. So if we come back to our homepage, we really have nothing on our homepage yet. So let's just show adding some different product categories to our homepage and maybe we can add some different things here to make it look a little bit better. So we'll click on the X. We're back at our homepage now, so let's just come here and do edit page. So the first thing we wanna do is if we scroll down here, we have Yoast SEO, so this is what our current title and meta description looks like. So this is where some keyword research will come in handy. Again, I'm gonna do a follow-up video for search engine optimization and essentially go through my SEO tutorial for this website and how I plan on growing this website with organic search traffic. But what I recommend doing first 
is we have our site title here, Wicker Guide. So I'm just gonna get rid of the entire SEO title here. And what we're gonna do is Wicker Guide, and we'll do Find Wicker Furniture, Wicker Baskets, and more. Or we'll do, all right, perfect. Find Wicker Furniture, Wicker Baskets, and everything Wicker. So I think that's a good one. We do have the word Wicker in there a lot, but that's fine. So the slug refers to your URL slug. So for this, it's just our homepage and then meta description. What you want to do with your meta description is really go over some of the main things your website's going to be about. So for me, it's going to be wicker furniture and it's going to be wicker baskets. So we'll come in here to the meta description and we'll do something like, okay, so we have discovered the top rated wicker furniture sets and wicker baskets for your home. We have all sorts of wicker products for sale on our shop at wicker guide. Okay, so that's good for right now. So you wanna set your title tag and your meta description first for your homepage. Make sure it looks good so when people do look up your website in search results or people are searching Wicker type keywords, it gives your website a better chance of showing up. So we're gonna come up to the top here. We can enter some text. We can enter maybe some product categories here. So let's just do some product categories. So let's just do products underscore or categories IDs equal and the only three we have are 16 17 and 18 so that's how you're gonna do it when you're listing multiple product categories or products with their IDs so we're just gonna do product categories IDs equal 16 17 and 18 we'll come back over here we'll just take our meta description we're gonna copy it we'll come up here at the top and we'll paste it there the other thing we'll do is let's just do Okay, so we'll do this for right now. So we have our header tag one, welcome to Wicker Guide, discover the top rated. So essentially we just took our meta description and pasted it up here. Then we have Wicker Furniture and Wicker Baskets. And then we have our products, product category IDs, 16, 17, and 18. So we're gonna click on update and we'll see what our homepage looks like. So it'll look a little bit better. You wanna to continue to update your homepage over time so you can list some of your top blog posts. So you can also list blog post IDs here and then also your WooCommerce product categories. So we'll come over here and look at our homepage. So there you go, we have some different product categories here. Wicker chairs, wicker furniture, wicker rocking chairs. I probably wouldn't set it up exactly this way but this is a good starting point. Maybe we can just center the entire post here but right now our website is looking a lot better. If someone clicks on shop over here, they're gonna be taken directly to our shop. If someone clicks on blog, they'll be taken directly to our blog. And overall, it has the makings of a good web website for now. Really the next thing we need to do and the main thing you need to do to grow these types of websites is keep coming into your shop, creating new categories and adding more and more products to your shop. So if you look at my websites, beachfront decor and farmhousegoals.com, so for example, I'll just open up farmhouse goals. You can see we have our logo here. We have a menu up at the top. We have a today's deal link. We have a search bar up at the top, some advertisements on our website. We have some Amazon affiliate ads. This is our homepage here. So farmhouse decor store, all of the main categories. And then we have some of our subcategories that we've broken down. So farmhouse decor, so bathroom, Christmas, dining room, farmhouse design inspiration. So kitchen, living room, modern. So this is something I actually need to add more pages to farmhouse sinks so usually your homepage should just act as a way for people to find all the main categories on your website some of the top blog posts if we keep coming down we have furniture if we keep coming down we have wall decor we have christmas decor so if we come up to the top here and we go to shop you can see we have all of our drop downs here so if someone goes to bedding and let's just say someone goes to comforters so this actually cuts off a little bit too much so Another thing I need to fix on this website, but you want to make sure you focus on improving the way your website looks and the overall user experience constantly. I'm always finding issues with my websites with user experience, and you just want to make sure you're keeping them looking as good as possible. But if we come to the shop home here for farmhouse goals, and you can see here just in the farmhouse bedding category, we have 765 products. Just in farmhouse Christmas decor, we have 634 products. These were all added using Amazon. So adding, opening up each individual page, we come in here to Christmas decor, for example, we're gonna have all of our subcategories listed. So we have garlands, ornaments, pillows, we have signs, stockings, tree skirts, come down some of the different products for sale. People can come over here to the left-hand side, find some different products, filter by price, look at all of our different product categories. So you can continue to mess with all of these things and you can probably end up creating a website that's much better than mine. But hopefully, so far, what I've given you is you have a good starting point with getting set up with everything. So right now, for looking at wickerguide.com, the main thing I really need to do is I need to order a better logo than this one, but it's fine for the time being. 
I need to make sure that I'm adding more of these shop categories. And really what you need to do is make sure you're adding as much content as possible. So things like wicker rocking chairs and the other thing that I can do is some wicker design inspirations. So maybe, you know, a hundred different outdoor wicker design inspirations for people to learn from. So all of these different things, you want to create content on your website. You want to add these products because it's going to help you drive revenue back to your Amazon affiliate account and any of the affiliates that you're working with. Okay, so now as we get into the last portion of this video, just a few things that I want to go over before I finalize this Amazon affiliate marketing course. The first thing is I want to look at the fee rates for Amazon, the associates program. So they recently just dropped their fee rates, unfortunately. So right now I'm in the 3% bracket for most of the products that I'm selling. So you can see home, home improvement, lawn and garden. So 10% for luxury beauty and Amazon coins, 5% for digital music, physical music, handmade digital videos. So for some of these, you're really not getting a huge commission all other categories 4%. A lot of them are gonna fall right into this 3% category. And then some of these drop down a little bit more even to 2.5% and 2%. So Amazon at about the end of April announced, uh, April 2020 announced that they're gonna be lowering their fee rates, which obviously a lot of affiliates didn't like because they kind of cut these in half even more. So I was getting around 7%. So basically overnight your income gets cut in half. That's one reason why I recommend using other affiliate programs. And it's another reason that I also monetize my websites with Google AdSense. And you can do a lot of testing to see what drives you the highest amount of revenue. But I just wanted to go over some of these free rates. So you know, if you're in this category, which I am, if I sell a $100 product, I'm only getting 3%. Now, keep in mind, I don't have to deal with returns. I don't have to deal with shipping. I don't have to deal with holding inventory. So Amazon does all of that for me. So all I have to do is drive clicks to Amazon. So it's still worth it in my opinion, but it would be nice if the fee rates were as high as they were about a month ago. Now, the next thing is when you come into the back end of the affiliate program. So for Amazon Associates. So if I were to scroll down here, you can see some of my orders. Uh, you can see my revenue for yesterday, today. I'm not really gonna go through my revenue that I'm making in this video. So. The main thing you're probably going to look at when you come into the your back end of the affiliate program for Amazon is your earnings report. So you're just going to come to reports, go to earnings report. You can see how many sales you have, how many items you have been ordered today, how many clicks you've driven. So there's a lot of information back in the reports and it includes even look fee schedule, payment history, download reports, and then they have feedback and help. So with that being said, I just want to go over a few of these things in the back end for Amazon associates. So first is product linking. So if you click here on product links, it's going to open up a page that looks like this. Scroll down. You can search for any product here. So just go search all amazon.com keyword, or you can search by ASIN or ISBN. If we keep coming down some of the best selling products by category, so you can find some of the different products that people have been very interested in. So if I come down here and let's just say I'm looking at home improvement, I can see what some of the top selling products are by category and home improvement. Right now, coronavirus is going on, so you're going to see a lot of face masks here. So just a di some different things you can look at is coming in here to product links under the product linking. Next is going to be banners. So if we go into banners, what you can see is you can find different promotional links based on what your website's about. So if we scroll down here, so let's just come down here and we'll click on home and garden. So let's just say I want to add some home and garden banners to my website. All you have to do is click on the category and then you can see they have all these different sizes here at the top. So if you're looking for a specific size, that's where you want to start. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see some different advertisements usually that are geared around whichever category you click. So up to 50% off every day, then they have new wind tunnels from Hoover. So you're going to see a ton of different products here and you can add these banners directly to your website. So if you're keeping up with all of the banners and let's just say you update them on a weekly or a monthly basis, it's a good way to drive additional sales for whatever category your website is in. Next, if we come to product linking and we come down here to native shopping ads. So native shopping ads and mobile popover are two things I use very often. So with native shopping ads, what you can do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna see native shopping ads, create recommendation ads, search ads, or custom ads. So what I generally do is I'll create recommendation ads and I'm just gonna go through the overview here. So if we click on recommendation ads, they look like this, related products. So there's gonna be some related products just based on the content on your website. For search ads, what you can do is actually add a search bar and you can have some related products here as well. So when people do search in that search bar, they're gonna bring go to Amazon and it's gonna allow people to 
purchase Amazon products after they use the search bar on your website. So it's a great way to drive additional Amazon revenue and then custom ads here so you can create ads with specific products on them. You could pretty much do whatever you want here. So if I, they have the example here, my favorite cameras for 2015. So I could say, you know, my 10 favorite wicker furniture sets or something along those lines and I can add 10 different products here and create what's known as a custom ad. So I do use the native shopping ads a lot. So under product linking native shopping ads, I would definitely recommend checking that out once you're trying to monetize your website. Mobile popover. So with the mobile popover, if we come up here and you look right here, so someone starts scrolling on your website, there's a mobile ad at the very bottom of the page. You'll find these on my websites for beachfront decor. You'll find it on my website for farmhousecolds.com. So if we scroll down here, all you have to do is make sure you have the right tracking ID here for all of the different tracking IDs for any of the stores that you have. And then you're going to have a JavaScript code here. So you're going to take this code so you can highlight it. We're going to copy it. And then all we would need to do is come over and use that insert headers and footers plugin. So the headers, footers and post injections plugin the same one that we use to implement Google Tag Manager. So if you're using this plugin, and even if you're not using this plugin, what you wanna do is before the close, the body, the closing tag, right here, you're gonna add it to desktop and you can add it to mobile. You could just do mobile here because it's a mobile popover. So we could just do mobile, but I'm gonna add it to desktop and mobile, and we're gonna click on save. Okay, so now it's that simple. Now I have that mobile popover Amazon ad on my website. Okay, so we're going to come back up here to the top. So with product linking, mobile popover, next is link to any page. So if we open link to any page, you're going to see here link to favorite destinations, link to search results, link to any page. So essentially, you can just create links to any single page on Amazon so you can drive people to those pages with the purpose of them purchasing products through your Amazon affiliate link. So it's just another option here. It's not something I really use all too often. So next we're gonna come over to promotions. So if we come to featured promotions here, so any of the featured promotions Amazon's running. So here's a quick example, get 20% off a new Kindle e-reader with trade-in. Get an Amazon gift card and 20% off. They have all sorts of promotions here that you can use. So if there's any promotions that make sense for the people that are visiting your website, maybe you talk about movies a lot, you can say get up to $35 off a new Fire TV device. So if you see any promotions here that would work well for the people that are visiting your website, then you can add those directly to your website. Okay, coming back to the top here under promotions, Amazon Bounty Program. So for the Amazon Bounty Program, if you drive people to Amazon and they end up per or they end up purchasing Prime, they sign up for Music Unlimited, Prime Video, Baby Registry. So for example, you're running a baby themed website, you get someone to go to Amazon and set up their baby registry directly through Amazon. Same thing with weddings. Every time you drive someone to do that, you get a fixed rate. So it, I don't know the exact amount for each of them, but it's between three, five and seven dollars about. So if someone signs up for Audible through your link, you might just get an additional five dollars that month. So driving people for these different Amazon products, they're gonna give you a little cut. It's not recurring, unfortunately. So even though people sign up for Prime and renew probably every single year, you're only getting a one-time fee, and I believe it's about $5. So they do have how much each individual bounty is, but again, it's not a huge portion of my earnings, and it's just something that allows you to drive additional people to Amazon, signing up for their services, just another way for you to earn revenue. Okay, so coming back up to the top here, Amazon promo codes. So you can actually put specific Amazon promo codes. So here's some examples right here in the front. Save 50% on select Ollie Times products. So you can take this promo code, get link, and add it directly to your website. Again, it's not something I use really all too often, but if you find promo codes that work for your website visitors, then they're worth testing at the very least. Next is tools. So site stripe, this is something that I use pretty often. So if we open up site stripe, what it is, it appears at the very top of the website. So when you're signed into your Amazon account, you can actually just get text image and text and image links for specific products. So I open up an example page here and you can see here, I have this household essentials wicker basket. So if I want to link directly to this product, I can click on text here and you're gonna see store ID. So this is my store ID for Amazon Associates and my specific tracking ID for wickerguide.com. So I can take this link right here and link it on my website. You can do image. So it's just gonna be the image here. You have small, medium, or large you can select from and take this code at the bottom, add it directly to your website. 
And then a popular one is text plus image. So you've probably seen these around on the internet before on specific websites that do Amazon affiliate marketing. And with this, you get the Amazon logo, you get the product image, and then you also get the link here. You get the price prime shop. Now open link into new tab show border. So you can just take this code right here, add it directly to your website. With the site stripe, you can also come right here and go directly into earnings. You can create native shopping ads for specific products. You can share specific pages. So there's a lot you can do with site stripe and it's something I use pretty often. I used to use it more in the past, especially if you're linking directly to products or product pages, it can be a great way to drive additional clicks and ultimately sales. So coming back over here and we come up to tools link checker. So with link checker, what you can actually do is check individual links just to make sure that the tagging for the URL is linking to Amazon and that the referral is going to be tracked back to your associate ID, not something I use very often again. And one thing you can find is let's just say we come over here and we take this text link. So we're going to copy it. We'll just come over here. We'll paste the link. So if you look at your individual Amazon affiliate marketing link and we come over here, you can see tag wicker 0720. So that's actually my Amazon affiliate marketing ID. So you want to make sure that that is in the link. So if you're not hundred percent sure, you can always just check a link that way. That's usually the way that I'll end up checking links just to make sure that I have the right affiliate ID in that individual URL. Okay. So next under tools, product advertising API, that's what we use to set up our Amazon keys. So if we come back over here, you want to make sure that your Amazon keys are properly added through WooZone. So when you install the WooZone plugin, you come in here to Amazon setup and configuration, and we scroll down. You want to make sure you have your Amazon access key and your Amazon seeker key. So you enter them here, you check them to make sure they're active, and then you click on add Amazon AWS keys, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on save. So I don't want to show you my access key and my seeker key right now, just because it's for my account. So if you scroll down, you would see my access key and my seeker key. And the way to get those is through tools and product advertising API, and you can generate keys at all times. Amazon recommends updating your keys, I believe every 90 days. So it's a best practice to keep your keys up to date and you can always generate new keys. Next is going to be one link and link your accounts. So with one link, it allows you to monetize your international traffic from Europe and Japan. You can link all of your accounts. So you link your U S account with your international associate account and allows you to earn more from international visitors. Last but not least under tools is link your accounts. So very similar coming to link your accounts. You take your United States store, select geography, and you can link this, your United States store with your specific store. So just a couple of options here in tools. And then with reports, it's just the earnings report. So that's kind of a little background of Amazon associates, some different ways that you can tag products on Amazon and drive people to the Amazon websites, obviously with the hope of earning more commissions. Okay. Coming back over here to pages, a few of the pages I recommend adding before you get started with creating your website fully is your privacy policy and an affiliate disclaimer. So with your privacy policy, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to edit. And as you can see, there's a little privacy policy in here already. So if we open up, I'm just going to preview this link right now. So we're just looking at the page preview. So I'm actually going to update this completely. And what I like to do is just come to this website, privacy policy generator dot info. And all you need to do is enter a little bit of information. So it's business name, website name and website URL. And then we can take this privacy policy. We'll just come all the way down to the bottom. We're going to copy this privacy policy and we're going to come over to this page. So we just keep this title exactly the same. And all I'm going to do is paste in here. So we're going to select all, get rid of it and just paste all this information so we can make it look a little better. But for right now, we're just going to come in here and publish it. So we have our privacy policy created. And again, that website is privacy policy generator dot info. You can also just do a quick Google search of free privacy policy generator, and you'll find other options as well. So with that, it just helps you. Protect your website and protect yourself by making sure that people know exactly what types of information you collect, whether or not you're serving any advertisements, whether or not you have affiliate marketing products. So I always use a privacy policy on really all of my websites. Now, the next thing we're going to do after privacy policy is you want to use an affiliate disclaimer. So if we come over here, I already have my affiliate disclaimer here. I just published this page. So we're going to open view page. So with our affiliate disclaimer, it says by using and visiting wickerguide.com, you agree to know the following and just basically says we do affiliate marketing. We link to products. 
We use Google Analytics. And then I just have at the bottom, we, you should assume any click on wickerguide.com that leads to an external source could be an affiliate link and we may or may not receive compensation from the sale. Now you wanna make sure you have these links all in the bottom on your footer of your website. So again, we went through menus a little bit earlier. So just create a menu and make sure it's always at the footer of your website. So just a couple things that you should do, make sure you have your affiliate disclaimer, make sure you have your privacy policy. So when you come into your pages, those are just two pages that I would recommend having. You can also do a contact us page, allow people to contact you and you can get emails from people directly much easier. So that's something that I'll set up a little bit in the future. So a couple things that I want to go over now next, I would recommend installing this plugin here, Easy Updates Manager. So this allows you to automatically update your themes and your plugins and also WordPress. And all you need to do, it's the free option, is just enable automatic updates with one click. So I'm not gonna go through this in the video, but this is just a really easy plugin to make sure that you're always up to date with your plugins and your themes and the current version of WordPress. So if we come over here and we go to dashboard updates, you're gonna see I already have an update here. So you're constantly gonna have updates coming in and you don't wanna fall behind your updates because it could leave your website vulnerable to hackers and it could lead to security risks for your website. So you wanna make sure your plugins and your themes and everything are all up to date. So come in here, update plugins, but an easy way to do it is just easy updates manager. They have a completely free version that will constantly keep everything up to date on your website. Okay, so the next thing I wanna go through is doing keyword research for your website. I would highly recommend using the Google Keyword Planner. So if you sign into your Google Ads account, go to Tools and Setting, and then go to Planning, you're gonna see the Keyword Planner. So with the Keyword Planner, you can find exactly what people are typing in when they're looking for products and services relevant to your business. So with this, let's just say I do Wicker, let's say Wicker Furniture, and we'll just do Wicker Baskets. And we can click on Enter and Get Results. So if we scroll down here, it's gonna show the top keywords by relevance. It's gonna show keyword ideas. So wicker chair, cane furniture, wicker patio furniture. You can add a filter. So I can just say, I wanna make sure the keyword contains wicker. So we're gonna click on apply. Okay, so now I use all this information as I'm doing search engine optimization and keyword research for my website. So if I'm creating an article about Wicker Furniture, you're gonna see 22,200 average monthly searches for Wicker Furniture. Wicker Baskets, over 27,000 average monthly searches. And then within Furniture, you see Wicker Chair. Within Wicker Baskets, you have Wicker Storage Baskets, Wicker Laundry Baskets, and there's probably a lot more types of Wicker Basket keywords that I can use as I'm starting to create content. Wicker Bar Stools, I already went over Wicker Rocking Chairs, Large Wicker Baskets, Wicker Chair Cushions, Coffee Table. So all of this will give you ideas for the types of content you should create on your website. And I'm gonna use all this information. And again, I am gonna be doing an SEO video specifically for this website. So I'm gonna go into way more detail with this with how I set up my search engine optimization strategy for my own websites. So I can drive consistent traffic to my website and really consistent revenue. So I would recommend using the Google Keyword Planner. If you're not running an active campaign, then the average monthly searches will only show ranges of data. So this might say 10 to 100,000. If it's a little bit less, it might say something like zero to 1,000. So you're only gonna see ranges of data if you do not have an active Google Ads campaign. So you can create an active Google Ads campaign or you could just not worry, focus too much on having the exact average monthly searches and just go by the most popular keywords just based on what type of range they're in. Obviously, if something's in 10,000 to 100,000, it's getting a lot more searches than something that's in 1,000 to 10,000. So just keep that in mind as you use the keyword planner, but it is completely free to use. You don't have to pay to set up a Google Ads account or to use the Google Keyword Planner. Now, the other thing I would recommend doing is coming over to Google, just typing in some of your main keywords. So here I just typed in Wicker and I can see what's ranking for Wicker. So I'm probably never gonna rank above Wikipedia, but if we keep scrolling down, you can see things, what you should know before buying Wicker Furniture. Wicker Furniture, wickerparadise.com, they have Wayfair, Wicker Furniture you'll love. Keep coming down here, wickerwarehouse.com how stuff works, what is Wicker. So what I'll do is I'll click on some of these links and just look at the pages that are ranking on the first page. So what is Wicker on how stuff works? So this can also give you some good guidelines on how to write a good blog post because this blog post is ranking. So clearly Google sees it as a good enough blog post to put on the first page. So if we come down, you can see there's four total pages of content here. So you can use this to find some ideas for how to write a blog post or different ways to increase your rankings. 
And then I'll also come to a website like wickerparadise.com, just see some of the different categories they have, see some of the different things that they're selling, any of the blog posts that they've written. All of that information can help you grow your own website. So I would highly recommend doing that, just going into Google, seeing what is already ranking high, and looking at their overall website structure and overall website strategy, and kind of incorporating some of that with your own website, especially with blog posts, and especially seeing some of the pages that they've already created based probably on their own keyword research that they've done in the Google Keyword Planner or another keyword tool. So just some different things to keep in mind as you're trying to grow your website. You wanna make sure you're doing keyword research so you know what people are typing in, so you know what types of content to create. Okay, so the next thing as we come in here, I've already went over it a little bit, but you wanna make sure you come into this customize section. So if you're in the back end, what you can do is just go to appearance and customize. And then a lot of times if you go over your theme, so if we come to flat some, so they don't have it here, but just go to appearance and customize. It's gonna open up this page where you can adjust the way your header looks, you can adjust the styles of your website, the way your blog looks, the layout, the colors, the format. WooCommerce, layout, footer, pages, portfolio, menus, widgets, additional CSS. So there's a ton of different things that you can do through the customized section and you want your website to look exactly how you want it to look. So that's a great way to make sure that the style is exactly what you want it to look like. Now, if we come back over here, we have best wicker rocking chairs for sale. This is currently uncategorized. So as you're creating blog posts, what you wanna do is under posts, go to categories. So with categories, you're able to add categories and you don't want all your blog posts to be an uncategorized. So I can add a category and just say wicker. I can add a category and say wicker furniture. I can do a category and say outdoor wicker furniture. Maybe I start doing some different design ideas. So I do 100 backyard wicker design ideas. And then my name for my category for those types of blog posts would be wicker design ideas. So again, I'll go over this a little bit more as I create my search engine optimization video, but you wanna make sure you're adding good post categories for all your blog posts that you're creating. Now, the next thing, if we come over to this page, you're gonna see down the right-hand side, we have recent posts, search, recent comments. I haven't really adjusted this at all, but to adjust what comes up here, what comes up in the footer of your website, all you have to do is open up widgets. So again, in appearance and widgets, that's where you can add things to your footer, your footer too your sidebar, your shop sidebar, your product sidebar, and there's all these different widgets here. You can download additional plugins that give you even more widget ideas for your website. So just making sure you adjust all of those widgets there so your website looks, again, the way you want it to look. Now the last few things, you wanna make sure you're using social media to promote your website. If we look at beachfronttocore.com here and we look at our Pinterest page, so from Pinterest for Beachfront Decor, I drive 19.2 thousand link clicks, and this is over the past 30 days. So you can see it's plus 51%. So I've been able to grow this pretty recently, getting a lot of impressions on my pins, a lot of saves for my pins, 2.7 million monthly viewers on my pins, and over 15,000 followers. So you wanna continue to grow your social media following and your social media presence because it helps you drive additional traffic back to your website. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, traffic equals more affiliate link clicks, which in turn equals more revenue, which is the ultimate goal here. So make sure you're setting up social media accounts for Pinterest, for Instagram, for Facebook. If Twitter makes sense for you or any other social media accounts make sense for you, you wanna make sure you're setting them up. You can also use YouTube as well if you wanna incorporate video. So there's a lot of options that will help drive more people back to your website. Okay, coming back over to our website here, you can see I have this blog post, Best Wicker Rocking Chairs for Sale. If you're not familiar with writing blog posts, creating content, again, I would recommend going to iWriter.com or another service where you can order content. Just create your account, go to order content, and you can pretty much order whatever you want from a 150 word article to articles that are thousands and thousands of words. And then you, you're gonna get content, you can take it and go directly to your website copy and paste it, adjust it, make sure it's formatted and looking good. And that's gonna help you increase your rankings. It is gonna be an investment, but you have to look at it like an investment. There's nothing wrong with spending 200, 300, $500 on content, and then seeing your website grow and those sales will eventually help you drive more and more traffic back to your website. Last couple of things. So I would recommend going to Google. If you're looking for additional WordPress plugins, just do a best WordPress plugin search and you're gonna see all sorts of guides here. I like this Kinsta guide. I've went over this in the past, but wpbeginner.com, 24 must have WordPress plugins. 
49 best WordPress plugins. So a lot of different options for different ways you can customize your website. And you'd be surprised what all these different WordPress plugins do. If you think you want to accomplish it on your website, there's probably a WordPress plugin that will do it. Last but not least, if you come away from this video and you feel like you want to learn more, don't be afraid just to go to Google, Amazon Affiliate Marketing Strategies, or also looking up additional videos on YouTube besides my videos because every single affiliate marketer out there is going to have a lot of different strategies and tips that you can utilize to continue to increase that traffic back to your website. So even just coming here, 19 creative ways to increase Amazon Affiliate Earnings. How to make money with the Amazon affiliate marketing without a website. So there's a lot of different guides down here to help you increase your earnings. So hopefully this guide allowed you to get started with building your website, learn how to import products directly to your website, create your Amazon associates account. So you can start driving these clicks to Amazon and driving sales and getting that revenue because the best part about having a website like this is you don't have to deal with shipping. You don't have to deal with inventory. You don't have to deal with returns. So that's why I prefer this model over drop shipping or even e-commerce. E-commerce can be very good for businesses that have to use e-commerce, but if you're setting up a brand new website, you can set a web website up just like this for under $2,000, which I know that sounds like a lot of money, but any type of business idea that anybody has is going to cost a lot more than that. An e-commerce website just to carry inventory is going to cost a lot more than that. So create a website, focus on your niche. I'm going to continue building out this website, going through how I build it out so we can keep increasing the traffic. I'll go through the traffic reports and how much organic search traffic I'm driving. So every little detail so you can grow your website along with me. If you have any questions about my Amazon affiliate marketing course, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.